to Level Sync, a Final Fantasy XI podcast with your hosts, DA Soccer, Caladrius, Lost Time Lord, and Quetch. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Level Sync, a Horizon Final Fantasy XI podcast. Coming to you this week with some amazing stuff. But before we get into that, I want to introduce my fellow podcast, The Tears. And you'll notice that one of us is sadly missing this week. Mm-hmm. But it's his birthday today, and I, I think he preferred it this way. So this is our birthday present to him, is that he a doesn't day off. have to... He gets a day <laughs> off, and he doesn't have to uh, be a part of this episode, though I'm sure his heart wanted him to be. Uh, anyways, I'll start on the upper left of my screen. We've got Ayame Cat. What's going on, lady? Meowdy. Mm. It's going going well. Next up, we've got Caladrius, also known as Icy Caladrius, also known as that Caladrussy. What's going on, friend? That was good <laughs> until now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, uh, we've got uh, Mr. Quetch. What's going on, Quetch? What's up, LTL? I'm just chilling, my friend. And of course, me, the Lost Time Lord. Um, so tonight, guys, we have a real special episode. Um, we wanted to do this before we had this like all planned where we were going to do this before. Um, <clears throat> but then a certain patch dropped and it was kind of like, oh, we better cover that. Um, not that we had any like insight into what was going into the patch. So we found out just at the same time as you guys did. And, uh, you know, we changed the date of our recording and stuff and, and made that last episode for you. Um, so we're going back to the one that we were originally going to do which is an episode all about those fabulous things called H&Ms. Not H-E-N-Ms, not the new content. We may touch on that a little bit in different sections here tonight. But H&Ms, hyper-notorious monsters as they are found around the world of Vanadiel. Um, But before we get into that, uh, guys, what you been up to? Who wants to go first? What What you been up to? Not all at once. (laughs) <laughs> Don't everybody volunteer. Um, I, I can, think uh, Quetch goes first. I can go first this yeah, time. Yeah, you go first. Um, so uh, a couple things. Uh, I got. I was in actually speaking of uh, DA. We were in a merit party yesterday, which I'm kind of using that term loosely because I was 74 warrior and he was like 73 white mage, and uh, we went out to that camp outside of Tavnasia. There's like a buggards and, and sheep. I think I mentioned it on the last podcast or the one before. Yeah. Um, and I do believe that it was slightly adjusted in 1.2 to add like two more mobs. I think there's like two more buggards there. And now you can kind of keep the chain going the whole time as long as you're not killing super fast. Before, right. if you were killing even at a decent rate, you were running out of mobs. Um, so uh, I really enjoy that camp. And um, yeah, ended up... We, we actually did really good. Like, we did, like, 25k an hour or something. Um, DA ended up getting 74 White Mage, and I got 75 Warrior. Finally, uh, a second Good job. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, second job is 75. Um, so, yeah, it was it was, a, it was a good little EXP party. Like I said, kind of a merit party, because the other guys were all 75, but um, him and I were both leveling up. Um, so, yeah, that's good news there. Uh, other than that, H E M's. We did, we now finished as of, what's today, Tuesday? As of yesterday, we finished the third, uh, we did the rocks. So now we've done the crab, the, as a group, like we have like a static, the crab, the scorpions, and the rocks. Um, Sadly, on my run, uh, striders did not drop, but they did drop on our second run. We ended up doing two. So I'm still striderless, but uh, at least there's hope now. Um, Trotters, yes, the trotters, the very EX version. Trotters. Uh, on the scorpions, however, uh, I have a little story for everybody. I, some of you may have been there. I'm not sure, but I'll definitely tell the story for the audience. But uh, we killed oh, the story. <laughs> yes, we killed. We went into the scorpion fight last week, and we had known that there was one ring that hadn't been discovered. So whatever, like sure stuff had been dat mined, but you don't necessarily know where things come from from the different tiers or the different fights until they actually drop from the mob, and then you can verify. So basically in the Discord, every time something would drop, you know, people would post it and then the devs would go, okay, approved, it's no longer a leak, you can now you can now talk about that item here. And so we knew that there was still one ring from the Scorpions that hadn't dropped yet. And so um, we're, we fought the Scorpions, it's a really uh, interesting fight, you know, it's a lot of poison, 
Um, you got to space the corp scorpions out like 40 yalms from each other. And you basically run around killing them in, in reverse order that they spawn. And, uh, and they're really like tanky and tons of, you need tons of healing in order to kind of like survive. So, um, you know, we, we killed the first scorpion and it was real tense, but once you got one down, then you've got more people to open up to help DPS and heal and stuff like that. So we eventually get the fight down. And what does the scorpions drop? Uh, one single like rare EX item. There was like, I think there was like a crystal and something else. It was a really small drop pool, but that one single item, it was a thief ring. Mm. It was a thief ring that gives you uh, reduced cooldown on sneak attack. You lose, uh, you you lower the cooldown of sneak attack by one second every time you critical hit. And I was like, holy crap! You know, this is a really great ring. And uh, my, you know, I was I was the th person that was C comming thief for that run, so I, it 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 went to me. And as I I'm sitting like that, that's really awesome. This is a really cool ring to drop here. I look at my chat, and Eric is there, and he says, "Oh, that's not supposed to be there." <laughs> that is a tier three drop, uh, you know, from a, from a, a mob that has not released yet. So, uh, I first thing I do is equip it actually, and then I go out and do some critical hits. You can see it in my VOD, and I <laughs> lower, I have recast up, and I and I lower the cooldown of sneak attack by a couple of seconds. I'm like, oh yeah, ring totally works. And I was asked to drop it, and um, they then made us random, uh, like over 500. They were going to give us the ring nobody had seen yet. Under 500, they were going to give us the other ring that people knew about. And uh, um, I had rolled over 500, and the Black Mage, the, I, I forget the name of it. Actually, I mean, I think you know the name of the Black Mage ring. Opuntia Hoop. There you go. Um, we were told we could have that, and we just needed to figure out which Black Mage would get it. Our Black Mage is randomed. And uh, Rookie, who I mentioned on last week's podcast, or our last, our last podcast as well, uh, was a Black Mage who got it. So, um, I mean, yay for them. Um, I was, I guess you could say bummed, but at the same time, like, it was a bug to drop. Like, I get it. Like, it's the type of thing, like, you gotta kind of get rid of, so. <laughs> yeah. You said Rookie has it? Can I have, yes. a, can you request something to Rookie for me? Sure. Can he take? A, can you take a good screenshot of it and like upload it onto the Horizon uh, wiki? The oh. one that's on there is horrible. It's blurry as heck, and there's <laughs> like a cursor in the front of it, and it's the only image that we have. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I would appreciate that. Thank you. You know whose image that is? <laughs> Who is it? It's mine, where I screenshot it off of uh, or snipping tooled it off of Quetch's stream. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we need clear yeah. images. Please. Uh, yep. Yeah, so, um, also, they had gone out and done some testing, and I just want to let people know it is active during spikes effects. So, increased magic accuracy and MAB. Uh, people wanted it to be the next Sorcerer's Ring, but sadly, it is not. Um, I'll post a picture here on the, the podcast so people can see the ring. But it's like MAB plus 50, MAC plus 20 during spikes. Uh, that was uh, that was a big thing for me lately. I have two other stories. Um, one involving Nidhog, and another involving Vritra. But I will actually save those for later in the episode. Okay. Oh, I see why. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. <laughs> can get down with that. What have you two been up to? Sky farming. Like a lot. We did like a double sky farm last weekend, right? Yeah. We got I did most six of our wishes. Yeah. <laughs> you you got a lot of EXP. I didn't get to do the diorites. I was running all over the dang place. I'm just gonna say, like the sky farms are chaotic. Everybody's everywhere. There's a bunch of us in the freaking Discord. It's too much. <laughs> Honestly, it's too much sometimes. That we've been doing the H and M's. We took down the crab uh, yesterday. That was um, very stressful. It took like, a few attempts. A lot of death. No, no, it took one. one. Okay, one. one. We one shot at it, but people died. Okay, it was it was rough for for them. I didn't die, but rest in peace, Snoochie. We need to develop a better strategy. Like uh, the first uh, wizard crab or whatever. There was like a couple of missed stuns and it killed some people with the Blizzaga spam or the Waturga spam, whatever it is that it does. Mm -hmm. um, but then once we, we got back up and we developed a, a better strategy for taking out the, the two, like, you know, the bully and the wizard crab, um, 
the fight became kind of laughably easy. Even like mm-hmm. at the end when like he was berserking or whatever, like it took us an extra like few seconds to kill the bully. And our tank was like, no worries, I got this. He's just hitting a little harder. We were like, spam okay. healing him. We are spam <laughs> healing him. We're like, he's not going down, okay? We've Those got are two just sitting there like, you. I'm fine. The other tanks it's are healing. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting healed, okay? He didn't go down. Every- well, he, I think he did go down. No, but... Snooch died. Oh, Snooch died. Oh, okay. Yeah, Snooch is, Snooch is the only paladin in that. I was Oom, by the way. I was running to go convert when that happened, so. Sorry. Oh, yeah, my fault. It's not my fault. It's all right. We, <laughs> we won. Did the crabs. Um, yeah. We got the warrior ring, the black mage, or the all jobs, asper and drain ring, yeah. um, and two D cloths. Okay. And that was it. That was nice. Uh, I did like a tatami shield run. I got a tatami shield as well. It was uh, literally like 50-50, because a lot of us were not using the Picaroon uh, shields. We were using the Hickory ones. And that there was a lot of deaths for that, too, I'm just going to say. <laughs> I haven't actually like, fought that mob. If the he gets intimidation off the Thundaga, is stupid. The intimidation like his, is stupid. Okay. His Thundaga would take me at like 1,600 health down to like 400. The thieves were dropping. The Tarus were dropping. <laughs> freaking pets were dying you know like you can only do so much and i was like sleeping him to try to stun him because you can't stun him because he's like immune to stun because he's like thunder based or whatever so okay i'm just spamming sleep and sleep too the whole time and trying to heal and the whole time it's like you are intimidated by him by gratian or whatever and i'm like oh my gosh like what is going on why can i not heal i'm trying so hard to heal it won't let me that was rough, but we got at least half of us some shields, which is nice. And you know what? I, I did something big today. Uh-oh. I could say that my journey of popping the damn aromas is done. Oh. I got my sachet, okay? No way! Congratulations. That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Seriously. I've that's huge. Prob- <laughs> it's been at least 20 hours of trying to get that fucking thing. And now I don't even, I'm not even going to really use it. I'm, it's not for my thief. I'll probably use it on Warrior, some other shit. If I ever play like a melee job, but like, when am I going to do that? Not anytime soon, but I have it. Are you saying mainly because wow. uh, your crossbow and arrow are taking up that slot? Yes. Yeah. My crossbow is nice. It has that plus four agility and like, I was fighting, was it like a, I think it's like demon killer or something like that on it. But yeah, acid bolts all the time, bullying, procking the freaking defense down. It's nice. I think that's all I've been. Oh, uh, oh you talk about that. Talk about the merit party that we had too. The merit party that we had. Mm-hmm. We had a merit party because they fixed. Yeah, because they fixed that one. Oh, on Perogo. Mm-hmm. They fixed yeah, that they one added too. more mobs to uh, Paroka Nurgle Isle so it actually can like keep up if you have like a lot of DD. It can actually keep up with the flow. We never lost chain. Dang Great. It, so it was, it was a really good one. And are, then, you, uh, are you a polar out there for that? No. Oh, okay. I was we gonna had a say. Taru. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, a Taru. Thing. And he was not having a good time. I forgot what his name was. He was, he was getting beat up pretty bad. <laughs> I remember his name. <laughs> it was King Kai or King Yeah, he was he was a really good bard, one. but as a Taru with a minstrel's ring, you're living on a fine line of living. Right? <laughs> wing cutter, like, do like you if, need it? <laughs> like if you step into a wing cutter or something doesn't sleep, you're pretty much gonna take a dirt nap. So he did he a really good die. job. Um, I was healing. He did never he never died. <laughs> yeah, that was a good part. That was me, you, Tomain, Soren, King Kai, and somebody else. Well, that was a good merit party. So they fixed that camp. I did do another merit party at the new Giga camp. A melee merit party. Oh, really? Okay, I was wondering Those if melee were any good. Fucking, they're beefy. Okay. They're they're. You can do it. Like it's it's not bad, and they give a shitload of EXP. I think I was getting like three hundred on a normal mob, like no chain. Mm, okay. Ooh. Like, yeah, like eighty something. And a... Like eighty five yeah, or no. something. Like I have fully merited axe, and I have. Like everything capped, right? And I was eating sushi to make sure that my accuracy stayed above ninety. 
Like it was, it was pretty, pretty good. But we did that for like three hours. I got like eight merits. Um, and then I've done, a, I've gotten 80 merits in the last like week. I've been meriting Holy a lot. crap, dude. <laughs> a um, lot. Did another merit party in Murphitod Mountains, the raptors and the damselflies. And did they fix they that added, one? They added a couple. Oh. It still runs out if you have Rengar with you. But <laughs> because he weapon skills and half the damn mob's HP goes away. But he paid to have a gun gear, so shout out to Rengar. Making me look like shit on deeps. Uh, <laughs> we had our LS uh, the, the We had a guy finish their uh, gun gear this week as well. It hits like We've a truck, taking it out. Man. Yeah, dude. I, I seen him do a 2300 uh, gear Skogul into a 4K light. I was like... Yeah, I've seen Rengar do a 2800 gear Skogul into like a 3K, 3.5K light yeah, for double light. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I think ours was a third third or fourth step light, which is why it was so beefy. But yeah, I think that thing trucks. Yeah, it's a, it's a damn good weapon. And Dragoon's OP anyway, so it's great. Yeah, shout out and to Oni. Go ahead. I said shout out to Onihi. Uh, did Oni finish theirs? Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. Um, other than meriting, we did the Sky Farm. I sat and killed golems for six hours. Like, I, I merit how long, partied. How long did it take for the first Diora to freaking draw? About four hours in. We got the first one. Did you have a thief? Yes. Yeah. We had oh. Soren with TH4. Um... And then about an hour before we were just going to quit, two more dropped. So we ended up with three diorites, so not bad. That's kind of what but you want coming out of there. We yeah. also got four merits <laughs> in the time we were there. So not bad, little merit party. And then uh, unless I finish my soil gorget, my light gorget, I need to finish my breeze gorget, and then I have the three I want. And then, like I said, 80 merits. And yeah, that's about it. We did some HGNMs. I do them obviously with Ayame and LTO. And we didn't just do crabs. We did crabs this last yesterday. But we did. How many runs of rocks have we done so far? Three? Well, we yeah, did. Because we had the first we, one where it was glitched. The first one we, where oh. we didn't get any loot. Yeah. So if that counts mm -hmm. as one. And then we did two runs uh, last week, last Monday. And then for those, we got. I think we got the region staff both times. Mm -hmm. We got Protector 5 drops. both times. Yeah. And the dragoon and, ring. And one time was, or no, both times both was times. the dragoon ring. Yeah, it was, it was identical drops, two runs in a row. Yeah. Our second run got full drops. It was, uh, it was a ring, the staff, the um, uh, trotters, and the protector five scroll. I was like, <laughs> I sat and observed Damn. them die to <laughs> crabs. Uh, but it was entertaining. I mean, the fights seemed super fun. In all honesty, like it's it's something different from normal, so it's it's fun to do. Um, I think we're doing scorpions next week. Yes, so that'll be fun. We'll take our stab at the scorps. Yeah, so far we've won for one, all of them, so should be fun. But other than that, I haven't really been up to anything other than meriting like crazy, trying to get. There was more a UFO finished. yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah. So we were farming LTLC organs, right? And we finished his so that he could finish. I forgot what you were working on your OB, right? The ice OB, yeah. So I could be a cool guy at the new camp on my black mage. <laughs> a cool guy? Yeah. And we finish his, and I go, okay, I need to work on my Breeze Gorget. So we start killing Fwabwos and the fucking other ones. And I need Dolphin. one UFO yeah. organ. One. And LTL goes, hey, look, a UFO. Keep in mind, it's me on war. Ayame on thief and LTL on summoner. Okay. <laughs> this is going to go great. So it kills me because I get fucking stunned and fucked up and it just beats the shit out of me. I can't put my shadows back up. It then turns and kills Ayame. And LTL <laughs> runs out of MP, so he starts throwing Carbuncle at it. <laughs> and then on the second, Carbuncle runs like a little bitch to go zone. <laughs> I had like 37 health left. <laughs> Keep in mind, there should be a clip of him running by with the Benny Hill music going with this UFO <laughs> chasing him and Carby chasing the UFO because he can't catch up. <laughs> so he zones, rests up, comes back out to raise me and Ayame. Me and Ayame are sitting there, LTL casts rays, I stand up, the UFO is still directly above us, it comes down, teabags my ass to death and just flies back up. 
<laughs> you were so happy. You're like, yeah, I get the raise first. And then he <laughs> gets <laughs> smacked down immediately. I was like, oh, I'm happy. I didn't get the raise first. I'm like, yeah, fuck you, Ayame. I'll get raised first. Uh-huh. And then teabagged by a fucking UFO. So we're like, I think we're done sea farming for tonight. And we all just home boy. <laughs> Except for me, I was able to go back naturally and uh, go get my OB, you know. It's because he plays like a little bitch. I have to. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Run in there and smack things with my staff? Like, I got you guys! <laughs> like, the best part is LTL did not see the UFO floating over our corpses waiting. No, I didn't. I wouldn't have res them if so. You would have res me, don't lie. I might have. There's a chance that I, that I might have. I'm not going to lie. The whole um, time he was praying that we didn't get charmed and come fuck him up. That was his main concern. I mean, it's, it's a legitimate concern. So it's a real concern. <laughs> it is. It's happening. So, LTL, what have you been um, up to? What have I been up to? Um, so, I got my Black Mage almost to 73. Um, getting into those big boy uh, pants. Um, buying everything that I can afford. Hoping to make more money to afford the things that I can't afford. Um... Need to go do an ugly P pendant rung. Um, need that pendant. Um, need a sorcerer's ring, so I need to do that stupid fucking DCNM with the the coffers, the one that can turn into the two that can turn into a mimic or whatever. Um, like you have a chance, like there's three coffers or whatever. I don't know if you guys have ever done this one. I haven't done it now. There's three coffers, like a big or a small, medium, and large, and one of them is like, you know, you don't you don't know which. But if you choose the correct one, like you just open the coffer and the run is over. Um, but the other two uh, are mimics, and each of them does like different shit, like mimicy shit. Um, not an impossible fight; you can fight it, um, but it's preferred, obviously, to to get it like on first shot with the uh, chest opening. And that BC drops both the minstrel's ring and the sorcerer's ring. Um, Either of which would be great, because I could trade one for the other. They're basically equal price, I think. Um, or at least sell one to be able to afford the other. Need that. Um, but yeah, love and Black Mage. Um, burn parties are awesome. Another thing we did, I don't think that we mentioned this, and it was a fun thing. Um, I had never actually done this before. Um, surprise, surprise. But um, one night after a long night of doing stuff, and I know these two were there for it, um, my boy Gozer is going for his um, Aegis shield. And, uh, you know, I don't know, Quetch, maybe you've been a part of one of these, but, like, where somebody has the extra relic shield and you go out to Mizero Coast by the, the rocks and rams camp and you trade the shield and you have to fight a giant, like, Tavnazian ram-type model. And never heard of this. Dude, so check this shit out. For those that don't know, so, like, one of the steps in getting your fucking Aegis shield is you have to have another relic shield. So, you know, luckily, you know, we had other people who had them um, that were willing to trade it for him. So you trade the relic shield to this spot in Mizro Coast, and this big ram appears, and you fight it, and it's pretty badass. It does, like, all of the normal ram shit, petrification, like that HP Warrior down HP. bullshit. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but there's one other thing that it does. That's kind of unique to this mob, um, which makes it ever so much more interesting. Um, what it does is it calls for help, and every, and I mean every, sheep and ram in the zone <laughs> comes running to you. Like, even the fucking charmed ones of the Gigas sheep. Like, the charmed Gigas, the, she the Beastmaster Gigas who charms sheep. Like, have the sheep pets. Yeah. Even those things come a fucking running. Uh -huh. And, like, you have to kill every fucking sheep in the zone. Um, I mean, you don't have to kill them. You can still kill the big guy. But even when you kill the big guy we found, we, we were done. We beat it. And we're chilling. And, like, the fucking, the gigas charmed sheep, like, come trotting up, like, three minutes after we <laughs> killed the fucking guy, ready to go. <laughs> like, hey, guys, we're here to fight. Um, that was really interesting and fun fight. Um, like I said, I'd never done that, um, even on retail before. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, other things, uh, basically, these guys mentioned most of it. Um, just having fun with the HENMs. Um, I had Thanksgiving last week. I had family in, so I wasn't able to do the 
the double Sky Farm bonanza last weekend. Um, yeah, by the way, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I don't think we said it. Um, but yeah, that's all I did. Um, anybody got anything else before we move on? Anything that you forgot to mention that you want to toss in there? Yeah, I was going to say, we um, our LS has been, since the Dynamis change, where it's twice per lockout instead of every, mm -hmm. every three days, our LS has been experimenting a little bit with, like, lower man stuff. Um, so we don't have to have everybody there at the exact time and then, like, hope the right job show up and stuff like that. So we actually ran a split run the other day. Um, and I just wanted to sh say that I was part of the Bastok group. There was nine of us. Nine? Yeah. Nine of us. Uh, and we full cleared it. Like, we, had, we only had, like, 15 minutes left or something. But uh, it's just a it's just a, a a nice change that we've been able to kind of experiment and do something else. One group did Juno, so, one group did Bastok. Did you guys split the, the nine of you split the cost of the glass? We then what we ended up doing was again we were experimenting. So this is what we ended up doing that night. We combined all the currency from the two runs and then split the cost of two glasses, and everybody perfect split the currency. So okay. like the one group was luckier on hundreds than the other, but it evened out because we split everything equally. Good way to do it. So that nice. was cool. Made a little bit of, I mean, obviously we made some more currency there for my Mandow. But uh, other than that, uh, I just wanted to say, screw goldsmithing. Do not get into it. I, if I haven't ranted here before, I'm going to rant now. It. I've spent three mil this week and I've gotten 0. 0.6 skill ups. Uh, now I'm still recouping some of that, Gil. About a mil, 1.2 mil of it, but Stay away. Stay far away. That's all I want to say. Where's my signed flame ring, Quetch? <laughs> <clears throat> Coming. <laughs> I have to hit 97, and I start working on rings, so we'll, we'll see. I do have a... If you want, though, I have a Koenig shield. I have signed one of those. If you want to trade it for... I assume you have one. Yeah, but just a normal, non-signed one, so I might yeah. be down for that. Cool, cool. I would uh, definitely put my name in for what is it? The communion ring, the uh, int plus five. I sure. Forget which one it is. I need two of those. Thanks. Thank you very much. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna need to sell. Probably I'm, about I'm just gonna send him an NQ one, and he's gonna send me a fucking assigned NQ back. Prefer purchases, but yes, that is fine too. <laughs> you can sell the one. <laughs> if you. I'm a poor man, Quetch. I spend all my time meriting. Yeah, I hear that. You, you yeah, walk out right. of there with bird feathers and, and, and stuff. I had no idea that you had gotten 80 merits in the last month. I was a little shocked by that number. In the last like, week. Jesus Christ. In the last a week. Even worse. Damn, dude. Even worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's other things that we want to talk about in this episode. But before we get too deep into the episode, I absolutely forgot to mention this uh, at the beginning of the episode. And I want to make sure I mention it now. Uh, while everybody's still listening before we get that drop off on the, the YouTube drop off near the end. Um, guys, we have a live episode coming up to celebrate Level Sync's 20th episode. Um, we're doing this on December 18th, I believe. Yes. December 18th, which is a Monday. Um, time, I believe we determined was 6 Pacific. Did we actually decide the time? Uh, we yeah, did. Eight Eastern. Yeah. But yeah, didn't eight Eastern, so five Pacific. Eight Eastern, five okay. Pacific. Um, we're doing another live stream. We're trying to put together some stuff. Um, it may not be as full of the uh, Horizon staff as it was last time, but we're certainly going to uh, try to make that happen for you. But we are doing a live episode, and there are a couple of things that we want to mention to you now so that you can prepare for them uh, when comes the 18th. Um, we're going to be hosting a level one naked run from Windurst to Juno. No meds, no pots, no anything. Uh, no gear, basically. Basically, the gear that your level one starts on. Um, run from Juno to Windurst uh, with a prize that is yet to be determined. We'll uh, let you guys know what the winner of that will receive. Um, and also, we're doing kind of a unique thing, um, and it will be running all the way up until the, uh, the live episode itself, I believe. Um, we're actually holding a picture contest. Um, so if you guys want to take real-life pictures of uh, Horizon uh, or Final Fantasy XI uh, themed or based things, um, we're going to judge you. 
We're going to harshly judge your picture. Um, no, each of the five of us are going to choose our favorite. Um, and then you guys on the during the live episode will have a chance to vote on which picture you like the most. And the winner of that contest will win something that is also yet to be determined. Hang in there. We'll get you some updates and details, perhaps on what it is, or maybe it will remain a surprise. But we will let you know once we get that sorted. So don't forget, guys, December 18th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you there. It's a Monday. Don't forget. So there was one other thing I wanted to mention, guys. Um, if you want to get in on the action and you want to get plugged in to these giveaways that we're doing and these contests that we're holding for the next upcoming live episode, make sure you join us on our Discord. Uh, I'm not going to ramble off a random URL to you for an invite to the Discord, but make sure you check out in the comments and check down below in the uh, description of the video on YouTube and also in the description on Spotify and Apple Music. It'll lead you straight to our Discord. Anyways, guys, let's get on to the big stuff. Let's get on to the reason that we're here. I bet you're wondering why I've gathered you all here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> to, to hope for a claim? Yeah, well, let's... <laughs> let, well, shit. <laughs> well, we can talk about that, too. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about H&Ms. I'm sure you've heard the term. It means hyper notorious monster. Um, what that means exactly, I don't know that I'm sure. I don't know why it's hyper. Um, I know why it's notorious, because it's like there's only one of them. It's like one of a kind. It's like notorious. It's like that song like from the 80s, uh, Duran Duran. You know. Did you get on Napster back in the day? Notorious. No, LimeWire, before, mm. uh, <laughs> before uh, fucking Lars Ulrich uh, made it so I couldn't download it. Um, mm. Hmm? I was gonna say so you could give your computer an STD on LimeWire. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yes. That was that was the main draw of LimeWire was to fuck up your PC irreparably. Um, we're gonna talk about H and M's. Um, so I guess uh, getting started with H and M's is it's kind of the ultimate uh, end game stuff, right? There's a couple of different tiers. Um, the first tier I would say is generally uh, the Juno and M's is what they're called, but I would think that I would say that they come at the same time. Well, actually before um, Dynamis. So it's like, this is your first step or foray into like end game for 11. Now here on Horizon, um, King Arthro, which is part of the Juno H&M scene, um, has been made a little bit more difficult. So here on Horizon, it may not be in that same level of stepping stone, but you certainly could take out uh, these things before your group even steps into Dynamis. Um, with a well-coordinated group. And the, the H&Ms for the Juno tier are in no order of preference. Um, Rock, who is a big bird in um, Saramoj, Saram, Saramagoge, Champ, Champlain, Saram, Saramagoge Champlain. Um, <laughs> then we've got uh, Circuit or Circetto or uh, Circusi. Um, he is in the uh, Gerlage Citadel. Um, then we've also got Simurg, uh, who you may know drops those fancy, uh, Strider boots. Um, he's over in Rollenberry Fields, and we've got King Arthur, as previously mentioned, in Jugner Forest. We'll go in-depth on each one of those. We'll continue to talk about those. Just wanted to give you an idea of who they were before we got started. But the first one that we will start with is Rock. Um, so Rock is, uh... Very similar to Simurg in that they're both birds, and that's about where the similarities um, end. Um, Rock's job itself, I believe, is a white mage, um, given that it uses benediction. Um, so I think that that is, is pretty indicative. Plus, it drops um, something that is used by white mages, um, the, uh, the Dryad Staff. Um, not like the world's greatest staff for healing, um, but not bad. Cure potency plus 10%, MP plus 50, uh, White Mage, Rary X. Um, it's a great item. But uh, let's talk about Rock and, uh, you know. Let's, can we kick it off with uh, Ayame for the name lore? Yeah, 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 the absolutely. Lore. I was going to say, like, that. the first thing I was going to talk about was, where does the name Rock come from? What is what is Rock other than uh, he's going to lay it, the smack it down on your candy ass? <laughs> um apologies beforehand for any mispronunciations okay like a lot of these are from different cultures and stuff and i'm i could only read what i could read 
apologies, apologies. And most of these will be referenced from the FFXI Clopedia. So this is from that. It says, in Persian mythology, the rock was a gigantic bird of such strength it preyed on elephants for food. It was a large, white-feathered bird. The rock is most well-known from Sidbad, the sailor's encounter with one in 1001 Nights. Some scholars think the rock is a distorted account of the Epionis, also known as the elephant bird, a giant now extinct nine foot tall flightless bird from Madagascar. As some early explorers reported these creatures and thought them to be chicks of larger yet unseen birds. So just a big bird. Him's big bird. Him's big, big bird. Um, so yeah, guys, one of the cool things that we're going to be doing with each of these H&Ms is a lot of times you hear the name and you kind of don't think about it, but each one of these has a different story behind it. There's lore behind each one of these. And uh, Ayame, our resident historian, has taken um, some time uh, over the past week to learn, to, to get learnt on what these, uh, these are. And uh, we'll be reading them to us as we go through tonight. So it's going to be fucking awesome. Um, so as mentioned previously, um, rock spawns in the Saramagoge, Saramagoge Champlain. You know, if you just pronounce um, it different every time, I think one of them I'm will gonna, be right. I, I think, no, because it's, it's actually, I think the way you pronounce it is Saramuj, Saramujue, Mujui. M M yeah. It's got to be one of them. Champlain. It's something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't fucking know. I, I, that's one of the ones that I'll never get right. Um, but it's not just there, right? So it's like, if you've ever been to the garbage citadel, I mean, the Gerlage citadel, um, there's uh, three levels of gates, right? And you need four people to open each level of gate, um, which isn't a big deal if you're heading out there with, with people or friends. Um, but you have to go through all three gates to get back out into the Champlain um, and it can spawn up top. There's an area up top that's inaccessible from the outside. You have to go through the dungeon to get there. Um, and that's where it spawns. There's a big area that it can spawn out there. Um, so recently a new, um, implementation went into place and I believe that rock falls under this, um, is for, uh, mechanics for claiming. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, there is not really any mechanic other than have bodies there, and it will randomly pick someone to aggro to. Um, which is, you know, their fix for the issue that they're having right now with the, with the lag um, that was experienced where there's a lot of people farming stuff. So anything that makes things better is, is fine. I'm pretty sure that uh, rock falls into that category as well, though. Um, so the drops from rock are, um, excuse me, the, um, as previously mentioned, the Dryad Staff, which is a level 55 White Mage Staff um, with, with the notable stats of MP plus 50 and Cure Potency plus 10%, which is not terrible. Um, but, you know, if you're curing for 100, that's only 110, um, which isn't huge, but could be clutch if you needed it in a certain situation. Um, the other thing that it can drop is the Crimson Blade. Um, which is, I have one of those in my inventory because I don't think they're a big deal. Um, it's a level 49 uh, warrior, red mage, thief, paladin, dark knight, bard, ranger, ninja, dragoon, blue mage, and rune fencer. Those last two you don't need to worry about. Sword um, with MP plus 10 and int plus 5. In my estimation, that feels like, if anything, it would be a red mage sword. Um, really, I can't see any of the other jobs except for maybe blue mage. Um, caring about that sword um the other thing that rock drops uh which everybody hopes for when they kill rock is a damascus ingot which is used to create the habergia um those are the drops um yeah anybody have any stories or anything that they want to talk about with rock i i missed the uh i missed the fight aspect of it <clears throat> I, just, oh. I just threw that in so um you know right i think claiming and mechanics i think the word mechanics there was supposed to imply like what do the fight is like that was that was my fault yeah for not clarifying I, I, I didn't understand there it's fine yeah um so the things that it can do like i mentioned it was a, it's a white mage so at some point during the fight it is going to do a benediction for those that don't know 
Benediction is a is a white mage two hour, um, which allows the creature or NPC or character to uh, every two hours use this move and replenish their health to full, from regardless of where they are. Um, it also does um, a move called Giga Scream, uh, which is a three hit AOE damage. Um, none of these are terribly dangerous to a level 75 group um, unless you get caught unprepared uh, rock can kick your butt but um, you know if you have three or four people you should be fine especially if you can um, heal through stuff um, another one is blind vortex which does some some blind uh, dread dive uh, which is a uh, knockback and feather barrier which is an evasion bonus that can be dispelled um let's see uh it's immune to dark based sleep susceptible to light based sleep um and uh oh yeah uh apparently reading here on the clopedia i was unaware if this is the case and i can be corrected in the comments uh not something that i'm saying from my own personal experience but it does say here that it can cast massacre elegy and hoard lullaby which feels like a mistake from Simurg. Like this was something that was carried over from Simurg, because those are things that Simurg can do, I believe. Yeah, that's a those are bard um, abilities. Right. It's a white is mage I, bard. Oh. Is it a bard? White mage bard. Okay. I mean like yeah, is it like at that slash bard? I didn't I did not know that about it. Um so yeah, so I, apparently it can do those things as well. Uh pretty easy fight. Uh pretty you know, run to the mill drops, nothing great, nothing to write home about that D ingot uh, will make your friends happy. Um, so that's the first of the Juno NMs. Uh, the next one I do, is... I do have a story to share. Oh, from Rock. sorry. Let's hear a story yeah, yeah. about Rock. Yeah. Uh, in Era, it's one of the... I, it might have been the first H&M I was even a part of. Um, I I had joined a an, an Endgame shell, and we went up to Rock, and we got the drop. And I just remember it specifically because... For some reason, the staff was going for six mil at the time, and there were six of us. And I remember my like my first mil came from splitting the the healing staff drop. Um, and I I think I went on to use that to go and like get alchemy up. So this is like my OG character, like way back in the day. Um, nice. Yeah, I I don't think nowadays because of light staff. And I'm, I've thought about this back and forth. Like, why would that staff have been worth that much money back in the day? But I don't know. Maybe. Light staffs just weren't that existent. I don't know. Not like they are now, because everybody knows there's so much information out there. Like everybody knows how to get the ores, you know, to make the sta the staves. Um, so I don't think it holds that kind of value here. And I honestly, I don't even know if on Horizon if it's the rare EX staff or if it's the uh, no, I, the sellable I think version. You saying that made me remember that I, I think that because I'm reading from the Clopedia, yeah. um, it's got current day information. I think that it's actually called the healing staff, um, and it's not rare EX and uh, can be sold. Uh, you know, like it used to be able to back in the day. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So my mistake. Uh. I. You know. Obviously, am correct. Stand corrected. So yeah, that was that's. I haven't fought it here, but that's that's like one of those things that's just like like a core memory of my original era experience was fighting that H and M. That's awesome. Um. I mean, a little bit off the beaten track here. I have a very similar thing when I was very very young in the game fighting Leaping Lizzie. Um, and I was by myself, and I was on the PlayStation 2, and I was sitting next to my friend, and uh, I didn't have any fucking gill because I was just a little whippersnapper. And uh, I fucking, I've been farming Lizzie, and I'd never gotten his drop, and I finally killed him, and he dropped the fucking boots. And I jumped, jumped up. I was like, oh, my God, I got the boots. I was so excited. That was like 300K. I was like, I'm fucking rich. I can buy anything <laughs> I need. I was so fucking excited. Um, anyways, so let's move on. To that uh, notorious Sir Cussy that likes to hang out in the basement. Uh, we're going to send this one over to my boy Cal. He's very familiar with that score pussy. Let's, uh, right. let's hear it. I am intimately familiar with Circuit. I think I've killed Circuit shit 50 times. Just on Horizon. Um, firstly, it's in Garlic Citadel. On the, I believe it's considered the fourth map. It's the, so basically if you run into Garlic Citadel, run by, drop down the first holes that you see, you end up in the large chamber on the map. He can spawn anywhere in that chamber. 
which is an annoying part about Circuit because it has a very large spawn area comparatively to some other H&Ms. Um, and as far as I know, Circuit is a Red Mage warrior, I think. I think. Yes. Um, he pretty much is like the easiest, in my opinion, of the Juno NMs. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but he is incredibly easy to kill. Like, I think pretty much chump change. Demerg or Rock are probably easier, but only because but... he's got that those nasty, like, dick you around and hit you from fucking 30 meters or it's, yalms. It's actually or 40 yalms. 40 yalms, Damn. sorry. That's, that's you should be intimately wide. familiar with that, too. Yeah, I know. I, I, I've, I've fallen victim to Circuit a few times. <laughs> but Ayame has lore, so what is, what is Circuit? Circuit's lore, okay. In Egyptian mythology, Circuit was the goddess of scorpions. She was often depicted as a scorpion or a woman with a scorpion on top of her head. She was the goddess who could cure any manner of poisons, be they scorpion stings or snake bites. She was considered important as the Sahara Desert has some dangerous species of scorpions. As such, she also protected the gods from venoms of mythical creatures like Apep, also called Apophis, the serpent of darkness who always threatens the sun. Circuit would also punish wrongdoers with the deadly sting of a scorpion. Circuit in Egyptian means tightens the throat, referring to the effect of the sting. The type of scorpion she was originally associated with was the water scorpion, which is not a true scorpion. These are insects, not arachnids. So it must be pronounced Sir Ket if it's Egyptian. Yeah. You know how their words hmm. work. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anything about it. I just called it the Sir Cussy. Um Yeah, you gotta fuck that Sir <laughs> <Cussy>. <laughs> Um, as far as the fight, Circuit's pretty similar to pretty much every Scorpion. He does the stomp the yard, fucking spin, murder, LTL move, which is always enjoyable for everyone. Mm -hmm. He has a really nasty poison. I think it's like 50 HP a tick. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is advised to bring poison pots so that you can negate that poison because it does work for him. Um... I think it's called. I don't know if the one here, but doesn't doesn't retail uh, circuit have like an AOE poison as well, not just the single target poison. Yeah, I thought I remember I getting AOE, AOE poisoned. Yeah, venom storm. I don't pay attention because I bring poison pots, so I don't care. But <laughs> but he has poison breath. He has the AOE poison. He has um, critical bite, which is basically like mandible bite for all the other scorpions. Um, he has stasis, which is a single target par uh, paralyzed, and then, I mean, he, it, it, they don't agree, but I think it's the easiest Juno in them to kill. You can basically three man it to death if you're well geared. Um, pretty simple. I will start with the loot list of what he actually drops, and then include <laughs> what he never drops. So <laughs> you're always going to get a high re raiser and a re raiser or a re raiser. You are going to get the Circuit Shield or the Triplist Dagger, because I think they're on two different loot lists. You don't get both. I've never seen both at the same time. Um, I've seen... Or Triple Dagger, sorry. The Triple Dagger, it's worth like 10k on Horizon. It drops all the time. He does, however, drop the Venomous Claw, which is used to make a Scorpion Harness. Um, so that's your big money drop from him. You can get a Vile Elixir or a Vile Elixir plus one, and he drops a large chunk of gill. I think split between like six people, you get like nine k or something. Is that um, all he drops, Cal? Yeah, because he never drops the circuit ring. Because again, I have killed circuit like fifty times, and <laughs> I have never seen a circuit ring. You've never seen a ring? I have never seen a circuit ring. Now, Jeez. the one time I didn't go camp circuit, he dropped a circuit ring. But as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist. It's a fucking myth. I'm checking <laughs> what I'm checking what that's in this in the uh the drop table. It's checked as uncommon. That's ridiculous you haven't seen it. Yeah, it's from what I found it's a 7.6% drop rate. Yeah, Horizon's got it tagged uncommon, which with TH4 yeah. that should be a 18% drop rate. Yeah, I have never seen a circuit ring. It's hilarious. 
Um, but in my opinion, easy fight. Just watch out for the poison. You bring poison pots. Pretty much easy to do. Um, but yeah, that's circuit. Circuits. Circuit. You loot pinata. Loot pinata. Um, yeah, any stories about uh, Guild Circus? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got a, I got a story. So there's this little Taru summoner. That's oh, Jesus show. fucking Christ! <laughs> and we're fighting the Circusi, <clears throat> and we have it pulled kind of off to the left near the entrance to, or the uh, yeah, the entrance to the area. If you go down the stairs, you know, the little cave with the stairs. And we're fighting, and he does his stomp the yard, and LTL goes from the whopping 680 HP he has to zero HP because he's a tar. He then gets raised. Runs away, <laughs> sits down at like what thirty one yams, or no, something no, like no, that. No, 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 I was out. I was out of range. Yeah, you were out of range. That's right. And then I think it was Alexander who was dying from the mm -hmm. poison or something. So LTL, brave as he is, jumps up on his summoner and runs over to cure three <laughs> Alexander. And the scorpion stomps again and kills him. And all I see out of the corner of my screen is LTL's little Taru corpse slide across the ground. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> so, so the stomp, if you are a Taru, you don't want to be <laughs> involved with. You're a summoner, Taru. <laughs> like, man. Well, well then poor Dippy. Up, yeah, sorry. Poor Dippy. We were doing circuit. He was out there as a Taru Beastmaster. And he gets clapped because it spawned in the Hell Room. The one with all the skeletons and the freaking <laughs> uh, other shit over there. Hot. He gets clapped, but he got claim. So we pull it over. He gets raised. He runs over to sit down next to the mages, gets stomped, dies again. Gets raised again. It's alive for like a minute and a half, then gets stomped again. <laughs> he died three times during the circuit fight. <laughs> and I felt so bad. And it probably didn't even drop a claw that fight. It was just like, nah. <laughs> Uh, technically, three Haru sacrifices should make shit drop. All right, we know how this heard. game works. <laughs> Apparently, if you use the same Taru, it doesn't work. It just so, flip flops yeah. it, man. You got to die like on an mm -hmm. even number of times or something. Hmm. He refused to get up after the third one. <laughs> he just laid there. But oh, yeah, man. no, that's that's my funny stories with Circuit. That and just the depressing amount of Circuit rings I've seen. <laughs> Meaning none. Anybody else got any <laughs> fun circuit stories? The only fun circuit story I had was the one I've told a few times about the uh, the solo claim night where I was flexing my muscles and got me a solo circuit claim while the Link Shells uh, alliance was full. And I show up last. I showed up last window and then claimed it solo. <laughs> I was just like, you better fucking invite me. Um, <laughs> But that was the only uh, was the only uh, circuit story that I have. Um, next up on the list of Juno HNMs is one that we've mentioned a few times already. Um, is the uh, the bird of the fields, Mister Simmerg, who drops those very enviable boots sometimes. Uh, take it away, Ayame. What's up with that birdie? Yeah, Simmerg is a bard. I don't know if like. The sub job is warrior, but he's definitely a bard. He sings, okay? You just silence him, it's fine. Um, you could get to him uh, through the crawler's nest. You gotta, like, go all the way through the crawler's nest, and then you go up to this, like, little hill in Rollenberry Fields. He's around water. And there's a reason that he's around water. There's lore for it. Let's, let's read the lore, yeah? In Persian mythology, Simurg was a gigantic winged bird-like creature. It had the body of a bird, specifically a peacock, though it had features of an eagle or falcon as well. Lion's claws and a dog's head. Its feathers were copper-colored. It was so strong it could carry an elephant or camel through the air. It was an ancient creature that was so old it had seen the world destroyed three times. As such, it possessed the knowledge of all ages. If its wings touched any life form, it would cure them of any illness or injury. It was considered the natural enemy of snakes. It was said to reside in a place filled with water, Vuraskasha, the world ocean, which had the tree of life. 
at its center. Atop that tree, simmered roosted. In Iranian art, it is usually depicted as a giant bird and not a chimera of sorts. But, let's see what moves it has. Did I write it down here? Special attack. Mighty strikes. So yeah, I guess it gets a warrior two hour. Magic finale, massacre elegy, horde lullaby, and draw in that approx around 33 yams. And it has a very, very high evasion. Like, literally, every time that we've gone to kill it, it's like, the accuracy on everybody is balls, okay? Like, <laughs> even putting, like, dispel on and giving them, like, freaking uh, accuracy. What is the Madrigal? accuracy one? Yeah, Madrigal. Madrigal, yeah. People can't hit it, okay? <laughs> it takes forever. And it's only like, level 55. Yeah. The main thing that everybody does will, will be, like, if you ever go out there and camp it, everybody's killing the crabs and leeches because they're trying to get TP so that they could use it on it as soon as they get to it. Because, like, the evasion is insane on that thing. Um, what else do I need to say about this? The drops? Oh, yes. The drop. They're very oh, yes. nice. The drop. <laughs> He drops usually the re razor, the violixer, like every time, and the arcana breaker, which is just a hammer. Okay, whatever. And uh. sometimes, <laughs> why are you laughing about it? Because well, it's more than that. I mean, it's not great, but it's like a white mage club. Um, and it has the super useful effect of additional effect versus arcana, it weakens defense. So you can. Smack some arcana and weaken their defense super effectively. <laughs> I, I That's mean, super useful. Come on, like every day, I feel right. like that comes up. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. If only we had a club user to weaken the defense of this arcana mob, oh. we could have won. <laughs> I mean, that might be useful somewhere, oh. No. potentially. <laughs> Mm. Is there is there gonna be a pot H and M H E N M? Mm? <laughs> mm? Oh, mm? I don't know. Is there? I don't think there is. <laughs> <laughs> he also drops a uh, Damascus ingot sometimes, once in a while, and very, 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 very rarely Strider's boots and Gil. He gives Gil too. What do the but, yeah. Strider's boots do, Ayame? They get plus 12% movement speed. They're to very who? nice. To, to the whom? person that wears them. Well, who can wear, wear them? The thieves and rangers, I believe. I think those are the Yeah, those two, are the right? two jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Coach knows. Yeah. The, <laughs> the rangers can get out of here. They have W legs from Kieran. If it makes you feel any better, Ayame has Strider's boots. Does oh, that I, make you feel I better? Know. No, no. Make I, you feel better? I'm happy for Ayame. It's it's, it's like my white space. whale. <laughs> and, and I this is rubbing in the fact you have a riddle and I don't. <laughs> Fair. I'm always fast. Wait, but, you're up there. Yeah. <laughs> He's like Sanic. He's got to go. Um. What about stories from the? I don't think so. I, I said, oh, do we have any stories from Simurg? I've got one. That's pretty funny. So you guys remember that night that Toking solo claimed Simmer? Because we were all at KA. Yes. Yeah. So like, we made it from KA. Toking has solo claimed Simmer. Toking is a 75 warrior. And he is running back to Juno with Simmer. <laughs> trying to get to us to kill it. But every time he runs, he gets drawn in. Because he's running too far away. And it stops to cast like, you know, Horde Lullaby or something. And so I'm riding on a chocobo, and in the distance I see Toking yo-yoing <laughs> and for it from Simmerg to me. And then all of a sudden he just stops. And I just see Toking's health going, doot, 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 doot. Because it hoard lullaby him so he couldn't run away. And then started beating the shit out of him. And then he would try and run again, and it would hoard lullaby again. So we finally got there, we obviously killed it. But poor Toking was running, and there's this horde of people chasing behind him, praying he dies while he's running. Mm -hmm. It was pretty funny. We got to him. He was fine. I put a little note here. It was like, the draw-in procs at 33 yams, so stay within 30.1 yams to avoid <laughs> the draw-in. 
That's yeah. good, good advice for a lot of yeah. different uh, drawing mobs. 30.1. Make sure you have draw distance or whatever. And you can HXUI, something, you know. Any other fun things about Simurg? Anyone have any fun stories? I've never seen it pop. I've been at camp. Oh. Windows been there. It's popped every time. Never in the vicinity of me. Wow. I get to watch people I, fight Simurg. That's my that's my white whale story. I got another story for you then, Quetch. So I showed up late to Simurg, right? It's already like four windows in. I zone out from Crawler's Nest into where Simurg spawns, and I shit you not, I zone out, Simurg spawns, I hit Vogue, claim Simurg. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, that was convenient. And it, it spawned, you know how you walk out and it kind of like opens up and everybody goes around the lake? Yeah. It spawned behind everyone that was standing where you walk in. So none of them saw it. Damn. <laughs> so, so it's just, oh, cool, Simurg. Boom, and run off with it. That, that's that's awesome. the opposite of your experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Um, so rounding off the uh, Juno, the traditional Juno H and M's, um, is the uh, is royalty. We'll round off with some royalty <laughs> down in Jugner Forest. Um, Caladrusi, why don't you uh, talk about the uh, the king? The king Arthro which on Horizon is vastly different from retail, and I'm going to be describing the Horizon version of King Arthur. And I will say that it is my favorite H&M mechanically. Like, it is just fun, in my opinion, to, to fight it. Um, so traditionally, in retail, King Arthur is just a single crab that spawns and you fight it. It's pretty easy. He's not that bad. On Horizon, however... Instead of him spawning during his spawn window, first spawns, what is it, 10 night crabs, I think? Yes. And those night crabs spawn. Usually there's a shitload of people there. Everybody grabs a night crab, beats on the night crab. Once the last night crab dies. And the nameplate just, disappears. And the nameplate disappears. Then King Arthur will spawn. Everybody gets a chance to try and get in on it. However, now, with the claim system, temporarily set as it is. It's kind of luck of the draw if you're standing where he spawns. Um, if you get claim on King Arthur, you run him away from the water. I'm going to expressly say run him away from the water, and I'll explain why. Run him north. Stay north. He will... I forgot. I don't think it has a timer, does it? Yeah, he has when a the pond timer. Crabs? No, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. For the pond crabs. I don't know that there's a timer. There probably is, but I don't know yeah. what it is. Periodically, it is, he's... Anything, it's like 30 seconds max. Yeah, periodically, pond crabs are going to spawn from the rot water and try to kamikaze you. So they're going to run towards people and bubble shower. And it actually hits for quite a bit. So you usually want somebody running interception on pond crabs. Usually LTL or Black Mage for us runs interception on the pond crabs because they have, like, no HP. And then, as long as you're preventing them, you're focusing on King Arthur. Every 20%, he's going to spawn a bishop and a rook crab. As long as the bishop and the rook crab are alive, he takes lower damage. Severe. So yeah. 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 So the fight strategy is you're fighting him. Every 20% they'll spawn. Your DPS swap off. Skill chain the, the bishop and the rook. Kill them. Go back to King Arthur. I think it's at... Is it 60%? 50. 50%. 50%. The queen spawns. The queen is evil. In every sense of the word. It casts Waterga 3, I think. Or Like, think. is it 4? Pretty sure it's 4. It casts one hell of a fucking Waterga constantly. So, the strategy again. Switch off Arthro, murder the queen as fast as possible. And then continue DPSing Arthro. Once he gets to 20%, he will no longer spawn the pawn crabs. So then everyone can focus on King Arthro. And you can kill him. If he does reach his rage timer... He will murder you. He turns into what we like to call content <laughs> crab. <laughs> that also reminds me that the night crabs that spawned at the beginning in five minutes will rage. And they will murder you. So holding on to them for longer than like four minutes and 50 seconds is not a good idea. Which is also content crabs. 
Because sometimes <laughs> yeah. there's multiple of them that people have been holding on to, and they're just hundred fisting every fucking one that has ever looked at them the wrong way. Um, so, going away from that, because it had a lot more mechanics than the other ones do, what is the lore on King Arthur? There was no lore on there for any of the, like, BG Wiki, this, the Clopedia or anything, but obviously we know that this is a nod at King Arthur, right? We all know this. It's a play on words. Somebody is being punny over there at Square Enix. They're like, King Arthro, because Arthros are decapods, which are crustaceans. We're going to make them a crab. It's going to be great. <laughs> and I think that the place that they have him is kind of a nod to the Lady of the Lake, where is where freaking uh, King Arthur gets his magical sword, the Excalibur, from the Lady of the Lake, right? That's sick. Yeah, Obviously, the night that. crabs. The night crabs are a nod to like his Knights, Knights of, the of the Round, the round table, table, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they're so fucking strong after f however many minutes, five minutes, rage, kill everybody because they're super strong. Like they're known to be like ridiculously like crazy swordsmen or whatever. And then I think that they made the queen such a bitch with that water, water gu, whatever, because, you know, she cheated on him with Lancelot, right? She's making us all cry. <laughs> Guinevere! Yeah. <laughs> She did this to us. But yeah, that's that's so, the lore for that, I would think, right? So touching on that, since you said where he spawns. Mm -hmm. So to get to King Arthro, you have to go through King Romfer's team, tomb, all the way to the end and exit into Jugner Forest, again, in an area you can't reach any other way than running through Romfer's tomb. Um and I never put the Lady of the Lake thing together. That never clicked in my head. I put the Knights of the Round together with the ten night crabs and and all that, but I never thought about that. And then the nod to like chess with the bishop, the rook, pawns, all that stuff. It's a cool fight. Now, what does King Arthur drop? Noobs. Mostly fucking <laughs> his new mixtape. He drops uh, noobs. <laughs> he drops fire. Is what he drops. Yeah. <laughs> He drops Damascene Cloth up to three Damascene Cloth. From zero to three, it's important to mention he can drop yes. zero. He cannot can drop it. However, it has like a 70% drop rate, so normally he will drop a cloth, at least. He drops what I want from King Arthur, <laughs> the speed belt. Which is? Along, well, it's five, well, on Horizon, it's 4% haste, right? Oh, it's five. Five. Correct. Is it five? Yeah. For some yeah. reason, I thought it was four. Anyway, 5% haste belt. Basically, upgrade to your swift belt. Um, and then he also drops the magic kusses, which are... I mean, they're all right. I think they're red mage pants, right? Yeah, they're like yeah. int mine, maybe? Int three, mine three. Mm -hmm. So they're all right. Level 48, war, red mage, paladin, dark, beast, ranger, sam, dragoon. Um... And obviously the same thing everybody else drops, a re-razor and a vile elixir. In my opinion, the Horizon version is a shitload of fun. It's the reason I wanted to do this one, because I think it's a really cool fight the way they did it. So, fun one, drops good shit. Damascene cloths are obviously your money drop or your crafting drop. But I have yet to see a belt either. <laughs> I have horrible H&M luck. But, yeah. Anybody got any fun stories? I have a couple. But well, I just wanted to point out is. that the belt is on Horizon the way it works because anybody who's listening who maybe um, oh, yeah. isn't totally familiar with H&M's here on Horizon, um, but you know the speed belt. The reason it's 5% here is because if you craft it, it becomes the 6% version. And they did that in such a way that the, the actual craft is 107. So even if you are a capped leather crafter with plus 6, you know, plus 3 from gear and, and mod enhancement, and then plus 3 from synth support, you're still one level under the cap. So they added a risk that you have to take. You may break the item and lose your belt um, in order to get that last 1% haste. And personally, I'm a big fan of that design decision. Um, uh, the, obviously, the item has been incredibly coveted over the years and is one of the most useful pieces of gear in the game. It's, it's so many jobs can wear it, and it's uh, a very high haste percentage, and they add a little bit of risk-reward to the upgrading from the 5% to the 6%. And I believe the 6% is called the Sonic Bell, right? Yes. Yes. I think it's a 10% chance to fail. 
a craft if you have like as close as you can get that sounds Another right craft. um like uh mm -hmm. if you're under if you're under cap on something it's probably between 10 and 15 i would guess that sounds right crazy because it's a, it's a five percent chance if you're at the level and then every level underneath is an increasing increasingly uh more break rate insane you're not guaranteed to lose the belt mind you on breaking the synth on like a hakutaku cluster or something but you are running that risk anyway uh i mean we've, so, we've shared a couple of stories in the podcast i think about this guy right yeah, this this, like, this crab has been a thing king arthur stories like my favorite king arthur story is um we were fighting uh well we we got claim finally on king arthur and we're over there we're fighting it we're killing it i'm taking care of the the crabs in the background and all of a sudden, um, Quetch's name turns green, and then Eric shows up and one shots his ass into oblivion, and uh, and he was happy to uh, mark that notch on his bedpost to tell everybody that he had killed Quetch. It was fun. I'm killing crabs, getting ready for a not belt drop, and I get to watch Quetch drop. That was that was a lot of fun. I had I enjoyed myself that day. That was a good time. It was a sucker punch. Let's <laughs> just say that one should have dropped a belt just because of Quetch dying. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, uh, only other funny story, and I won't mention the name of the person, but it was like early on in the server, we were fighting uh, King Arthro, and one of our, uh, I think it was a thief. Uh, again, I won't say who, but I think it was a thief. Um, actually fucking called for help on the thing. Oh, no. Yeah. CFH yeah. block, man. One of the best additions yeah. to the Horizon launcher. <laughs> mm hmm Anybody else got one before I do mine? No? Go for it. So my favorite one is multiple people involved whose names I will not say. But there were two paladins holding night crabs waiting for the rest of their group to show up. <laughs> and at the same time, they both waited to five minutes. And I watched both of their HP bars go boom and just drop. And I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. And they are like really well geared paladins, like really well geared paladins. And it didn't give a shit. Those things hundred fisted and fuck their world up. I mean, and I'd never seen them rage before because I'd never seen anybody do it, right? So I'm like, oh man, that's fucking crazy. Like it was entertaining to me. <laughs> but yeah, that's my funny story with it. Got to watch one of them kill Sith once. That was kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, can I mention something, even though it's not part of the H&M stuff? Sure. Because they have the Overlord Arthro for the H&Ms, mm -hmm. and they added a wizard. That's so cool, because it's like a nod to Merlin, right? Isn't that sick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no? Can you cast Flood 2, is it, right? Or does he cast the Flood 2, or is it the... Uh, overlord. The, the Overlord. Overlord the, cast Flood 2. Yeah, the Overlord. Yeah, overlord he does spams that. Flood 2. The, the AoE Flood 2. I don't know. I don't know what the wizard did. They everybody freaked out as soon as he popped. They knew when he was going to come because the gospel. The gospel. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. He's a nightmare, but they got him. So. Yeah. Awesome, King Arthro. Great fight once again. Congratulations to the uh, Horizon team for creating something so fun and unique. Um, so we're going to move on to the next one, which is not technically a Juno H and M. I don't think. It's never really been considered one of those. And it's also not part of the next tier. It's kind of an outlier. Um, drops something real fun. Um, but I'm going to send this one over to my boy Quetch to give us a talk about uh, King yeah. Venegaroon. So I, I have not had a lot of luck in the previous H&Ms we've talked about, which is why I took King Venegaroon, because our LS has made a point to camp this one. And I, I think it's a common thing amongst... Uh, Endgame LSs to like try at least try to make an attempt at KV. Um, it uh, spawns. Uh, oh, actually, Ame, why don't you tell us where the name King Vinegaroon comes from if you found anything? Yes, it's the the Clopedia had something. So the Vinegaroon is a specific species of scorpion. It is in the order of Euro Pig Europagi. I don't know, known as the Whip Scorpion. Whip scorpions have a stingerless whip-like tail, which is used like a sense organ and not a weapon. The vinegaroon is a scorpion that shoots acetic acid vinegar in mist form when it's threatened. The vinegaroon contains no venom, but they do have powerful claws. 
they are nocturnal carnivores. They're found in the desert, the desert southwest of the United States and Mexico. So, Spitz I've never seen one of these things. You guys Google Vinegaroon. Yeah. Vinegaroon. Look at them. Have, they are freaky. They are very common here. Oh, never like mind. A big I've ass seen this. black scorpion with a whip tail. Oh, yeah. okay. I have seen them. I've seen and them. They, they, spitting so acid you, in this shot. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. fuck up and squish one, they smell like vinegar. Okay. <laughs> um, but you don't want to do that because they eat bugs and stuff and they're fucking harmless. They might pinch you if you piss it off, but that's about it. Even their acid does nothing to you. It's not potent enough, but if they like, if you take a piece of construction paper, put it in front of it and it sprays on it, it will bleach the construction paper. It's kind of cool. Hmm. We used to mess with them in high school. Games Kids Play. <laughs> Volume 3. <laughs> Teasing the Vinegaroon. So, uh, KV has a very special spawn condition. So, first of all, it spawns in Western Altapa Desert. And uh, it has a very special spawn condition. I'm not sure if it exactly relates to the way retail works, but here's how it works in Horizon. From, uh, from its TOD 21 hours after time of death, it can only spawn if there is Earth weather present. If double Earth weather... Is there like say there's double earth weather when that 21 hours ticks it'll spawn instantly if not you have to wait and if tw if double earth weather comes up it'll spawn instantly but here i think it's something like a 10 percent chance uh if single weather pops so um <laughs> kind of leads to like situations where like a certain vanity all day there's a chance of weather and the next day there isn't and on that day uh you know his window opens and he doesn't spawn then you have to wait a whole nother hour a whole nother vanity all day for possibly another chance at weather but there might not even be any then so you may be looking at four five six seven eight hours stretch where either it doesn't spawn or weather doesn't appear at the, the proper time um so it's the type of thing where people are often like tracking weather and whatnot to try to really uh get a good shot at this nm um this one is part of the new hnm claim system where it used to be when a mob pops you have a window within to tag it and then it's awarded to somebody who got a tag now, when it spawns, it's just randomly assigned to a person that is within... I uh, actually don't know. Maybe I'll ask you guys this. I know KB, we, we determined that it has about a 15 yalm radius from where it pops that one of those people will be in the claim. Um, I think that applies here, too. I don't know if you guys have seen anything I think so. like that. Like, yeah, we don't, I don't know specifically, but mm -hmm. I would imagine that it's on the same level as KB, probably the same area. Right. So... Uh, so that's it. So you want to wait for the weather spawn condition. And then um, once you get the mob, one of the most important things you need to know about it is if it's nighttime, it has a higher, it has a very high regen. And most people will often hold the mob, um, especially as Lynch members gather or whatever, to try to make a Zerg. This is a zerg fight. You hold it through nighttime into day. If it's already day, you just kind of like, some people will have like a holding party, like Paladin, Bard, Red Mage, or White Mage or whatever, and just cut the rest of the Alliance out. Because he has a very powerful AoE poison, similar to Sir Ket. Uh, also has a draw in, so it you know has the ability to draw in everyone and then slap you and poison you. So it's just easier if you have a holding party like waiting on the mob and then you set your melee parties up or whatever. We tend to melee burn this. Um, along with that, it has uh, melee attacks can petrify and they often do. Uh, the Paladins typically sub ninja to avoid those auto attacks. Um, also has like a, a single target. A couple single target moves and wild rage is the name wild rage yeah wild rage is the name of the thing where he, he kicks around he just kicks sand up like crazy and then everybody is damaged and poisoned so uh yeah that's basically the mechanics of the fight once uh once you're ready and you're prepped you basically just do a full-on melee zerg you just have everybody uh go full bore um if you have i'd say if you have 10 to 12 it's pretty fast if you have any more than that this thing kind of dies really fast at least now with the level of gear that most endgame shells are playing with uh that is the fight mechanics uh what are the drops now i just realized looking at this it says it drops a venomous claw and i actually looked at the drop table and v claw is in fact on there i had i've not seen that many um i've actually seen we've seen two aces helms two or three aces helms all the times we've killed it now aces helm is a helmet with four percent haste four strength seven accuracy uh for samurai it's your only haste helmet in currently in era and it's highly sought after for dark dark knight and dragoon they're the two jobs on the helmet they they are on home so they have a three percent haste um 
for accuracy helm. So this is an upgrade for both Dragoon and Dark Knight. Um, so we wouldn't, you wouldn't fault anybody on those jobs for lotting it, but Samurais, it's, it's like, it's what they're looking for. Uh, other than that, um, I guess I don't, I, I personally, I fought this thing a bunch of times. I don't really have any good stories other than like, well, you, you missed a drop. Did I miss a drop? The heavy shell? The heavy shell. I, I don't think I've seen this either. This is kind of absurd. Yeah, there's that one a actually does drop, right? It does for sure. Okay. So 75 Ranger bullet, um, rare EX, 99 damage, 360 delay, ranged attack plus 20, ranged accuracy minus 15. It's the type of thing you would use unlimited shot to fire. And it can only be used in the culverin or the culverin ah. plus one. Okay. Because it's because it's like a, a tank shell and that thing fires only shells. So like it's like I don't know if I don't know how to like best describe it, but that gun's the only one that you can use that bullet in. Yeah, so the cannon shell is its main ammunition. So if you think right. about it as like a hand cannon of some sort, it needs larger bullets in order to fire them. Right. So it makes sense. Um, but I'm actually looking at the drop table. Heavy shell is 10%. V-Claw is 15%. And Aces Helm is a very common drop at 24%. When we've killed it, we've gotten like an Aces Helm and an Earth Crystal or nothing. So uh, out of the maybe four or five times we've killed it, that's been our drops. But yeah, I I I kind of like camping it. I kind of like specking the weather and getting people gathered, and it's a really good item for the people that want it. So um, we've been pretty successful with that one. You know what we got when we killed it last? <laughs> An Earth Crystal. That's what I'm saying. Like it's either like nothing or Ace's Helm. <laughs> as far as stories go, I have two that are pretty entertaining. Um. The first one is we got out there, somebody else already claimed, right? And we were standing there and we're watching. These people had set their home point in Rebel and they were just dying repeatedly while this thing was up and just home pointing and running back and dying and home pointing and running back and dying. But they eventually did kill. They got the win like that? Oh no, 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 no. That one was the one that they yeah. all died. It went unclaimed. Earth weather disappeared and he vanished. Oh. Because mm -hmm. as soon as it went unclaimed, we tried to claim it, but Earth weather disappeared, so he just disappeared. The second can story I, mention, I have. Go ahead. Can I mention something about the drawing? You need to mention that if you're dead, it still draws in your dead body. <laughs> oh, yeah. So That's you right, can't yes. raise. You're going to get fucked up by his uh, wild rage or stomp the yard, whatever you're calling it. <laughs> the other story is our kill. Because we held it all the way through the night with a similar setup to what you were talking about. It was me on Bard, two summoners, and two paladins. I'm all just chilling, holding it. And then as soon as it switched today, we fucking deleted that Scorpion. Dude, yeah. I, I mean, like one set of weapon skills and some magic bursts and it was gone. And then he dropped one Earth Crystal. And all of us got sad. Because <laughs> we've been trying to get Ace's Helms for like our Dark Knights or Dragoons and stuff like that. And uh, no luck. You're muted there, LTL. Thanks. Um, I have a funny <laughs> story. Um... So a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, when the server was young and um, the nights were cold, um, there was a group of folks um, who claimed King Vinegaroon. I won't mention any names because, you know, I'm not like that. I don't like to call people out. Uh, this group claimed the king and proceeded to, f <laughs> to fight and wipe to him for the next six real life hours. Six hours. Fought this thing for six hours. And um, a lot of us were out there watching this happen. There was a meltdown like on the other side and some crazy stuff happened over there. But again, I'm not, I'm not mentioning anything. Um, they eventually gave up because they just couldn't kill it. Like people were leaving from their group and like there was just craziness and um we get claim get we're already there we're already all there we get organized and 45 seconds later we had a new aces <laughs> it was a that was a fun That's fight a feel bad eh? yeah it was uh you know if uh you know I, I don't feel bad for the folks that it happened to um i think that it was a, a pretty funny story 
Um, they obviously learned a lot and grew at that point. They 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 got much better. Um, but it's just a funny story from early on in the server um, of the King Vinegar Room. All right, so okay. if that's all we've got there, um, we're going to move on to the next level or tier of HNMs, which are known as the Xylark Kings. Um, each of the following three uh, HNMs has two different forms. Each of the three has an NQ version, and they each have an HQ version. Um, here on Horizon, I don't remember or know how it was on uh, retail. I think it was the same. Um, you have, uh, so when the HQ dies, uh, for the next eight days, it has a chance to pop. Well, actually, after the HQ dies, three days after the HQ dies, it's guaranteed to pop NQ. You won't get an HQ in the first three days after the king after the HQ king dies. On that fourth day through the eighth day, uh, there's a chance that increases uh, each day that the HQ version will pop. Those three mobs are Edamantoys, whose HQ version is Aspidosh alone. Uh, Behemoth, whose HQ version is the King Behemoth, the mighty, mighty, the mighty King Behemoth. And uh, the third one is Fafnir, and his HQ version is Nidhogg. We're going to talk about uh, Adamant Toys or Aspidosh alone first. Um, it is, uh, I think, even on retail, um, the easiest of the three uh, Xylark Kings. Um, however, in recent weeks, uh, the Horizon staff has decided to make Adamant Toys, the NQ version, well, actually, the NQ version of all three of them, significantly more dangerous. Um, they've added moves and added things. Um, so let's see. Um, I actually have a list of the new things that it do. But before we get into that, Ayame, darling, um, what is the lore behind the Adamant Toys? They're sap. But Adamantoys, okay, I'm gonna read this over here. It says Adamantoys is a Final Fantasy series creation. First appearing in Final Fantasy II in 1988, Adamantoys is sometimes translated as Adamantimai have appeared in Final Fantasy II, III, IV, V, VII, VIII, IX, X. And 13, as well as many Final Fantasy games outside of the numbered line. Its name is based on the words adamant and tortoise. Uh, as a verb, adamant describes anyone with unshakable determination. As a noun, adamant refers to any impenetrable substance. In mythology, adamantine substances are capable of harming or binding even the gods. For example, in Greek mythology, Kronos uses an adamantine sickle to castrate his father. Uranus and Greek pit Tartarus. Oh, and the Greek pit Tartarus is sealed with columns of adamant. In Norse mythology, Loki is shackled with adamantine chains. Adam adamant is derived from the Greek word adamas, meaning unconquerable. Yeah. And for. I don't know how to say his name, right? I'm going to just try my best. Aspid. As Aspido Cologne, maybe. <laughs> here's here's LTL's muted. This. God oh. damn it! I keep doing that to myself. <laughs> it's Aspidocialone. You should just call him Aspid, though. Aspid. Okay. In medieval folklore and bestiaries, the Aspid was a gigantic combination of an asp, which is a type of snake, and a turtle that lived in the ocean. It was so large, sailors would mistake it for an island. Uh, the aspid even had trees and bushes growing on its shell. The sailors would often drown when the, the turtle dived back in the ocean. Usually, this occurred when sailors started a campfire on its back. It might have originated with reports of an Irish monk who traveled on the ocean or the stories about Sinbad's voyages, one of them which involved Sinbad and his crew debarking on a small island, lighting some fires for cooking, the island shaking, and diving beneath the waves. 
taking some of Sinbad's crew to watery graves and leading to Sinbad being adrift on the sea alone. He reported a creature which looked like an island but went beneath the waves. Most medieval drawings depicted it as a large fish instead of the asp turtle mix. Its name is derived from the Greek words aspido and kilone, kilone, which means shield and turtle. The title it gives, asp, aspid, kilone sinker, derives from its uh, island nature, meaning to slay the beast to cause it to sink. Wow. Interesting. Damn. I had no idea. Very cool. Um, so uh, your boy Aspid or uh, Adaban Toys spawns in the uh, Valley of Sorrows, which you can reach through Cape Terrigan. Uh, there are two entrances. You want the one that's not on the beach. Um, spawns in a big area uh, in there once you walk into the main area. Um, fight mechanics. As I mentioned previously, they have changed a bit um, since the update, and I do have kind of a list of the things that the new NQ Adamant Toys uh, can do. So um, it's immune to slow and um, by extension, probably Elegy. It does an Earth Breath, um, which does a 50 uh, HP per tick Rasp. Um, it does Aqua Breath, which can do a 50 per tick Poison. Each of these breaths can do up to 850 damage um, on a fully geared Paladin, which is insane. And it does. That was, yeah, which was part of the uh, the thing that they changed. It has a 30-minute enrage timer, um, which was found out last night, I believe. Um, uh, don't worry, we got it back and, and managed to kill it. We just didn't have enough people there. Um, and way more HP. Um, from current accounts, average nukes, we're doing about 500 ish, and skill chains were doing about 850 ish, 50 ish. Each base nuke was like two to three percent of its HP. Um, other things, um, drops. What does so Adamant Toys? Um, this one we've seen now. I don't know the full pool of things that the Adamant Toys can drop. Um, on the server now that they've updated things. Um, but I do know that it can drop a hands um, is one of the things that it can drop the Aquarian abjuration hands, which gives you the Zenith mitts, I believe. Yes. Um, it can drop up to <clears throat> four adamant ores. I'm um, an adamant toy shell. Um, uh, the uh, shield called the Sipar or the Sipar, um, which seems pretty useless. It gives you minus 20 like water resistance, that's its only definable stat used by warrior, red mage, paladin, beast, samurai. Um, seems like garbage. Nobody really wants. Um, the heavy curus, I think, is another thing it can drop, which is a body piece for warrior, paladin, dark knight, which is agi minus five and water minus 20. Another uh, garbage drop that I don't really think that you'd want. NPCs um, were like 10k. Is that, like, that's the only reason you'd ever that's, want that, that, right? It's the, well, yeah. No, there's no other use for it, so we just, we just, we free lot it, and, you know, you can go NPC it. It also has a very low, abysmal, almost, uh, chance to drop an Adamantoy's egg, which is used for the Black Belt uh, quest for the month. Um, Aspidoshalone um, is much the same. Um, it has a, well... It's different in that um, it goes into its shell. So, like, you'll fight it, and it goes into its shell, and it takes, like, mega reduced damage. And you have to do enough damage to get it back out of its shell. Um, and then once it's out of its shell, it resumes taking normal damage. Uh, one of the strategies there is to set up uh, some skill chains when it's out of its shell and have some black mages uh, blast it to hell. And then when it's in its shell, one of the original strategies, don't know if this is still viable, um was any melee who's using a sword to uh, spirits within since that wasn't really cut by the um, the defense change on Aspid. Um, has an auto regen, um, rages after an hour. Um, really not too different than Adamantoys uh, other than that. I've not seen it or fought it since the changes. 
Are there any notable changes on Aspid that I that I'm unaware of? I, I haven't it's seen just a, got more HP. Yeah, I haven't seen a fight yet. I would assume it's probably got the same level of breath, and maybe they added debuff resistance. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, Aspid can drop the A body, uh, which is the uh, Dalmatica, which is sought after by most, if not all, red mages on the uh, server. Pretty amazing piece of gear. Um, drops the Dryadic Abjuration feat, which is uh, monk, samurai, and ninja feat. Um, martial feet and warmal uh, body, the W body. Um, we don't need to go through what all of those things are. You can look them up, but those are the things. So the martial uh, feet is for the um, cursed shoes, which is uh, warrior, paladin, dark knight, um, tank set, like tank set, and then the uh, warmal is. Um, the same things that can use the W legs, like red mages and rangers and paladins and stuff like that. Um, but you can look those up if you're curious. But yeah, those are the, the things about Aspid. Um, any fun stories? Any fun Aspid stories, my friends? We've claimed exactly no. one Aspid in all the months we've been camping H&Ms. <laughs> one Aspid, huh? One. <laughs> But I will point out that the changes that they made, so previous to the changes that they made to the NQs, my 75 war could tank all the NQ versions of tanked Adamantoys, Behemoth, and except for Fafner, obviously, because I don't want to die. But uh, <clears throat> I could tank Behemoth and I could tank uh, Adamantoys. But now tank, I would uh, eat dirt. Tank Fafner one night. How did that, how did that wind up? Into the ground, yeah. I tanked yeah. Fafner one night into the ground. Remember that. But that was just something I wanted to point out with the changes that's not really possible. Yeah, you can't do that shit no more. And I think that that was the point. So good on them for making it more uh, dangerous. They buffed um, the breath attacks. For sure. Absolutely. Any uh, funny stories? Any? Uh, I mean, obviously, we've uh, seen the, the fights, not been a part of many of them. Um, especially with the new claim shield, it's a little bit difficult. Um, so if no stories, we'll move on to the next one, which is the, uh, the King of Norvalin, the, uh, the sexy, uh, what is it? Uh, egg cow, Daniel, the egg cow. Uh, we'll move I was on waiting to, for Daniel. We'll move on to Daniel, the egg cow, and we'll send it over to, uh, <laughs> Ayame to tell you about the egg cow. I'm going to read the... Okay, so Behemoth, he spawns in Behemoth's Dominion now. And if uh, you have a chance of getting a King Behemoth, I'm going to read the historical background for Behemoth here. It says, in biblical legend, the Behemoth was a giant land creature. It is described as the most powerful land animal, a primal beast, which cannot be defeated by humans because it can only be killed by its creator. Uh, in the book of Job, in the Old Testament, it is implied to be a mammal, an herbivore from its description. It is uh, the counterpart to Leviathan. In Judaic legend, the behemoth having the horns and the strength, and the Leviathan having the fins and the power will fight, but both will be slain by Yahweh, who will distribute their meat as food among, along with meat from the Ziz, a gigantic bird. Behemoth is said to represent the land, Leviathan the sea, Ziz the air. The apocryphal book of Enoch states, Behemoth dwells in the Dudean desert east of the Garden of Eden. The word behemoth has entered the English language as anything extremely large or powerful. Behemoth is he Hebrew for animals. It's believed that the Arabic Bahamut is a translation of behemoth. Though, oddly enough, Bahamut is a giant fish, and the animal atop him, Kujata, is a giant bull. But he's just a big purple thing. There's, like, a different one, a different entry. It's not on the Horizon. That was from the Horizon Wiki, by the way, but th I have one for the BG Wiki, for King Behemoth. It says that he's a creation of Square Enix and has no mentions in history aside from the Behemoth the King Behemoth is simply a greater form of the Behemoth itself. 
ex uh, expanding on the idea that a behemoth is an incredibly strong and that he's incredibly strong and not able to be slain by mortal hands. There's more stuff because he comes up in like so many Final Fantasies. I, I grabbed some more information for him too. And he's, have you seen the baby behemoth whenever you've, have you been transformed mm -hmm. into it? Isn't it so cute? So cute. Doesn't it make you so happy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Little purple thing. But here's from the Final Fantasy fandom site. It says behemoths are large purple canine esque creatures with two bull like horns and flowing manes. Depending on the game, behemoths may be quadrupedal or bipedal. When bipedal, they, are, they often wield weapons. They appear in the game's later areas and are sometimes treated as bosses. Due to their great power, behemoths usually attack alone, but occasionally attack in small groups of two or three. Behemoths use strong physical attacks and often counter attacks with an attack of their own. If the player casts magic on them, the behemoth will retaliate with a powerful spell such as flare, maelstrom, or meteor. They're known to use a similar spell as a final attack. Due to their great strength and high HP, behemoths are among the strongest enemy enemies encountered in most games. So, you find him in Behemoth's Dominion. It's, like, the only thing that pops there other than, like, lightning? Yeah, elementals. Elementals? Mm -hmm. Does anything else freaking pop there? I feel like nothing pops there except for that, right? Yeah, it's just the elementals. But the Behemoth, he can do... They all have drawn, I think, right? All of them? Mm -hmm. So he has drawn in, and... Let me look at this. He has Meteor, which is AoE, and it's and it hurts. Kick out, Howl, Wild Horn, Thunderbolt, which is the one that will really fuck you. Shockwave, and then Flame Armor. I don't know if this is true or not, but like people have said while we were out there, if he's doing Flame Armor and you dispel it, he'll keep casting spell uh, the Flame Armor on him. That was Does the bug know? when he first when he first came yeah. out. They yeah, when they fixed that. And they fixed okay. that. But his flame armor does now remove buffs. Removes debuffs. Yeah. Removes or debuffs, debuffs yes. Him, yeah. Well, that's and annoying. He, and he also spams Comet now. Oh, yeah. That's the new thing that they added is that they could do Comet. Does, is that for both of them? Yes. The NQ and the HQ? Yeah. Because yeah. the NQ oh, prior no, just attacked and did TP moves, but now it has a spell. Yeah. All of the moves suck. So Meteor is the AoE, like just hits you and then kick out used when hate is generated from behind king behemoth and it has a 40 yom range affects everyone in range and causes blind Hal gives king behemoth a substantial attack boost wild horn is a cone-shaped damage originating from the front of king behemoth thunderbolt is a 30 yom aoe lightning damage centered around him and affects everyone in range like like nidhogg's hurricane win and causes stun and it lasts for a freaking hot minute, and it's awful. Shockwave is a cone-shaped damage originating from the front, and Flame Ardor Armor gives him blaze spikes. So, And also removes can... debuffs now. Yeah, they, they need to add that on the, the Horizon Wiki. They've been pretty good at keeping up with stuff, though. They need to add that, and they need to add the comment on here. But his drops are uh, 20,000 gil, Shining Cloth, Behemoth Meat, Behemoth Horns up to two, Behemoth Hides up to two, Behemoth Tongue, and then for Abjuration, so Wormal Abjuration for the head, which is the Crimson or the Blood, Martial Abjuration for the legs, which is Koenig, right? And then Earthen Abjuration for the legs, which, no, that one's, that, that one's Adam, Adamant and Arm, Armada, right? I just realized yeah, are, those these, are, the e ones. are these the updated mm -hmm. are these the updated drops for the kings? I just I just remembered like didn't they adjust the king's drops? One is one is the M stuff, one is the E stuff, one is the A stuff. I th yeah. I need to go and grab that from the Discord, but yeah, I think that they updated it. We yeah, they we changed all of them to be like respective to like the class. So like I think Behemoth drops like DD stuff. Espadoshalon drops uh like the A-hands and mage stuff, and then, uh, or no, tank stuff from Behemoth, mage yeah. stuff from Espadosha, along DD stuff from uh, Nidhogg, Fafnir. 
Yeah, I I haven't like obviously it's been like a week and change, and none of us have had any of those claims really. Um, or if we have, we've gotten pretty similar drops to what we're used to. So definitely like in future podcasts, we'll definitely talk about what drops we see. But be aware that on Horizon, there's been some updates to the loot pool, and we're still discovering it. Yeah. The main thing, though, the main things that he drops, okay? The main thing that he drops is a pixie earring, okay? Sometimes <laughs> a defending ring, but he drops a pixie earring. And, like, they had confirmed, I think they even put it in here, Square Enix has confirmed the drop rate for defending ring is not increased by Treasure Hunter. And I think it literally is either pixie earring or defending ring. Yeah, and That is correct, at a 95.5. Yeah, that's what it seems like. <laughs> that I know of, there's what two defending rings on all of Horizon. I think so. I think so. Yeah, two. Either two or three, but yeah, I know very few. Nathan has one, and um, I forgot the other guy's name. He's also in in Nathan's LS. Um, I know those two have one. Those are the only two I've ever seen. Anybody have any fun behemoth stories? Other than the ones we've told on this podcast, um, I mean, it's it's always a riot over there. Yeah, that is a, a nice, fun one to watch. Um, then we can move on. We're running a little long in the tooth here. Um, <clears throat> the final of the Xylark Kings, and perhaps the most dangerous in both of its forms, um, is Fafnir slash Nidhogg. And I'm going to send that over to uh, my boy, Quetch. Yeah, so... Um... Fafnir and Nidhogg spawn in Dragon's Airy, uh, but where do those names originate? I mean, I'm very curious about this one. So, for Fafnir, this is going to be so hard for me. These these are impossible for me to read, okay? Fafnir was a dwarf in North Mytho Norse mythology, appearing specifically in the Volsunga Saga and the Nibelunglied. You did Sorry. great. <laughs> He was renowned for his fearlessness and great strength. He wore Aegis Shalmer and guarded his father, King Redmar's treasury, which was filled with gold and jewels. Redmar came into possession of And Varanaut. I don't know what that is. Fafnir and his brother, Regan, killed their father to get the ring and all the gold, but Fafnir decided to take all the gold for himself. He turned into a dragon, a symbol of greed in Europe. Regan then uh, sent Siegfried or Sigurd to kill Fafnir. Siegfried, wielding Balmung, killed Fafnir and then killed Regan. Uh, when he learned, Regan planned to kill him once he brought all the gold back. And then it says, Aegis, Shilmer, Hrati, and Riddle are among the treasures of Fafnir's hoard. Hmm. Any of those sound then, familiar, Clutch? All, all those <laughs> items are present. This has got to be one of the more lore-heavy, like, drop to right? uh, NM, like, yeah. in the game. Uh, that was actually really fun to listen to. The Advaronauts is the treasure hunter gloves that, or treasure finder gloves that drop. Um, and the way it works on Horizon Gilfinder, is... Gilfinder, isn't it? Gilfinder. Gilfinder, yeah. The way it works on Horizon is the Gilfinder gloves and Riddle share a drop slot similar to the Pixie Earring and um, Defending Ring. Um, See. Uh, so that it drops in uh, Dragon's Airy is where it spawns. And it's a good old, I mean, ever since they reverted the three zones thing down to one zone, it's everybody in the pit now. And uh, Dragon's Airy is um, as fun as it always was. Um, you just got to be there when it pops. Hopefully you get claim. Fight mechanics, though. Uh, this fight is a fun one. You want to be, you want the tanks, preferably the tanks on one foot, the rest of the people on the other. Because if Fafnir ever spins, well, two reasons. First of all, if Fafnir ever spins while it's using a TP move, it'll use Spike Flail. And Spike Flail does a lot of damage. On uh, Fafnir, I believe it can only hit your alliance. But on Nidhogg, I believe it can hit the whole room. You guys can correct me on that one if I'm wrong. I haven't seen a Fafnir right. Flail. You're um, 100% correct. Gotcha. And additionally, the Hurricane Wing is the same thing. So even if you're just standing there, you're in a totally separate Link Shell, and it uses Hurricane Wing, it will hit you if it's Nidhogg. So um, you know, be aware of that and try, try to be out of range. Additionally, it uses uh, Absolute Terror, which will terror the target, usually a tank, for a period of time, roughly 30 seconds. Um, Dragon Breath. Um, I'm not sure how exactly it worked on retail. I, I kind of remember it was like a cone in front of it, and depending upon where you were in that cone is how much damage you would take. But here, it's definitely centered on the tank, 
and it may just be single tar it's not single target it, it'll actually hit through because I, I as a thief i usually position slightly off the foot and then come in for trick attack well that's the correct thing is you're supposed to be on the outside of the feet right. on the feet you like you said but you're supposed to be standing on the outside edge of the feet yeah well i'll even come to his flank because as thief i know if i'm i'm there for skill chains right so oftentimes this fight is a skill chain and a magic burst and um, I know I'm trick attacking all of my weapon skills, so I'm never like in danger of spinning it. Um, but other melees don't quite have that ability to just not have hate, so sometimes you can get a little hairy. Uh, the Hurricane Wing also blinds. I usually have eye drops in case I'm the one performing skill chains. And um, also uh, a common tactic is to turn and sleep him if he uses uh, a, a number of hurricane wings in a row because it weakens your whole alliance and if you know if like two go off you probably in the yellow slash red a lot of the people in your alliance so um people will turn and you'll sleep him so no dots and stuff like that and that's basically the flow of the fight however um horizon recently added new mechanics to both fafnir and nidhogg one of which is it spawns two darters um i've only seen this uh, have you guys fought this thing since this update? We it's been so out of our time zone, it's been ridiculous. Out of everybody's time zone, yeah. yeah. We haven't had a chance. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you have to kill them or not, or if they suicide like the crabs on Arthro, but um they don't seem to be too much of an issue. And then something else it seems to do is like truck forward. Uh and I'm not sure why I, it I believe that. they do suicide. Okay. I think somebody told me they do suicide. Um for, and for some reason, something else he does, he kind of like trucks forward. So you kind of have to reposition your tanks and all your all your party members and hope it doesn't like breathe at the wrong time or what have you. And kind of like lightly kite it, but not 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 like a King Behemoth fight, for example. Um, so that's the mechanics. The drops are, as mentioned earlier, it's like the Harati, the uh, the Aegis Shelmer, that's Fafnir. Um, the, the Riddle shares a drop slot with the Enveronauts. And then um, Nidhogg, and then of course Dragon Talons, Dragon Scales, Dragon Meats, Dragon Hearts. Nidhogg drops, I assume it's it's like E-body here with the way the, the, the change has been made. But they also both drop Wormbeard, again, Black Belt item. Um, and uh, that's, about, that's about it with that one. Uh, so very, very tense, very fun fight. I wanted to make sure that uh, we got the story of Nidhogg. We only heard Fafnir. Yeah. What is mm. the what is the lore behind Nidhogg? I'm gonna leave out some of these names because I'm not going to try for them. <laughs> but in North Norse mythology, Nidhogg was a dragon who gnawed on one of the three giant roots of uh, Yg Yggdrasil, the World Tree, a giant ash tree which connected all nine worlds of North Norse cosmogony. Nidhogg is located by Perv Gel Gelmer, a roaring kettle, and it's the source of all cold rivers. One of the three wells slash wellsprings located around Yggdrasil, located in the world of Helheim or Niflheim, where it feeds off the corpses to feeds off corpses to sustain itself. That's gross. Nidhogg is fated to finally eat through the entire route at Ragnarok causing Yggdrasil to collapse. Nidhogg will survive Ragnarok and feast on all the wicked dead in its aftermath. Nidhogg means malice striker or terror of corpses in Norse. Well, fuck. I want to I wanna point out <laughs> that uh, it's in the top of the Boyata tree. Yggdrasil. Oh. Mm -hmm. World tree. Isn't that cool? They, they nailed the, the Zalart kings, man. Um... Yeah, so uh, there are, I mean, we've, we've shared a number of stories about this particular set of mobs, um, but uh, I just want to bring up one that happened this past week. Uh, you know, maybe you guys, three of you might be aware of this. It was a, There was an early morning uh, Nidhogg that was fought by um, some RFK members. Oh, that was our, uh, so we had a bunch of our um, new Chinese members out there. Different time and zone than a... you guys, right? That's... Well, yeah, I mean, they're actually, like, Chinese people that, like, are friends of ours and are in the shell, but don't have access to Discord because of China, and ah. there's a humongous, there's a humongous um, language barrier. Yes. And in order for them to understand what we're saying, oftentimes, they have to, like, aim their phone at Link Shell Chat and let Google, like, do the translation. And when things are going hot and heavy or getting crazy, it's nearly impossible 
um, for them to translate stuff. So everybody's freaking out. Um, one of the summoners had a fucking thunder elemental out for some reason. Um, don't understand what that was all about. I wasn't there. I've only okay. heard about this like, I mean, since I, it happened. I just want to thank you for setting the stage because we were aware there was a language barrier thing, uh, but I was there yeah. for the whole fight. So I, yeah, it's kind of like hoping no, you had was, to have some input here. It was definitely because um, we had people who were like part of the normal crew, like Zeno was out there and, mm -hmm. and, and folks like that. And they were like trying to set up what we needed to do. And from my understanding, they got it to 35%, even with that barrier. Yes. Um, but then it got to a point where uh, they couldn't get, they weren't doing skill chains. And so there's been, there's been some conversations and a few, uh, a few of our newer folks from the uh, other side of the world are going back into training to uh, okay. relearn how to actually do those fights. Uh, the leader of the Chinese contingent for the, for RFK uh, was quite embarrassed that that he happened. He disconnected during it, though, is what I heard. Oh, so yeah, he, that like, not intentionally, but he is not he, good. He got yeah, kicked offline, so he couldn't even give direction. To his so people. the main person to help with translating was gone. Gotcha. So I, I just so, want to yeah. I just want to point out this is not me, you know, trash talking, but this is one of the funniest fights I've seen in a long time, <laughs> and I think and for a couple of different reasons. One was. They got it that low without ever sleeping at once. So like while it was like it was bopping everybody and, you know, they were having issues bringing it down, like it was dia the whole time. Not only was it dia but there was a thunder spirit engaged to Nidhogg casting thunder four, burst, thunder three. And we're just like, how is this working? When what planet is this thing like actually coming down and it hasn't just like obliterated and um i don't know it was super meme worthy and like we could tell like we could tell there was like new people on it you know but it, it was a valiant effort but man it was just like you every every moment was like they should be dead they're not dead okay and they're still going so <laughs> um oh anyway ending to that story is it rages and um hurricane wings for five thousand damage to everybody in the pit the entire pit gone and so we uh we hadn't like escaped and run back or anything like that we just the moment we, we should have prior to the rage but we didn't and um like every all of my my ls we all start home pointing and running back and um I, somebody from like another ls got there before we did and claimed it and ended up like fighting and getting the kill but uh it was a joy it was a, it, I, I was in delirium it was like 6 a.m or something and i'm like trying to like pay attention and like it felt like a fever dream honestly the whole thing felt like a fever dream um but yeah shout out to Zeno who was out there and like i'm sure he was trying his best to to kind of keep things under control he was he was very frustrated with that whole situation um and I, it's funny to hear about like you know if if we had all been out there if it had been in a normal time that wouldn't have been an issue but um with all of the new uh folks from china that are coming over and just learning and uh not having their main translator there for a good chunk of it was uh was certainly was certainly a good reason for them to die. That uh, when I heard about the thunder elemental, though, I was like, "What is even happening? Is this real life?" Like it was engaged why would the entire time. Like why would anybody do? That? And Zeno was telling us he's like, "Summoner, use uh, uh, I forget the the Leviathan move or spinning Mountain dive. Buster, a spinning diver, Mountain <laughs> Buster. Use those." And he's like. I he didn't say anything. He's just like, I'm just gonna keep out this thunder <laughs> elemental. It's super useful. <laughs> like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah, and everybody was, and they kept daing it so that like they couldn't sleep it. Yeah, Dina wanted to sleep it, but they couldn't. So it was funny. I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was Zeno or if it was Toming because I was asking people and like tells us like the fuck happened. Somebody said to me, they're like, I wish it would have just spike flailed us. It didn't spike flail. <laughs> it like sh it like shuffled a few times. We're like, oh, this is it's obviously over now. It didn't spike flail. I'm just like, I'm like, what the fuck? They're like, you you gotta you'll have to hear about it later. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what the fuck. Um, so that's it for the uh, the so-called Xylark Kings. The last and final tier of H and M's, not the most powerful mobs in the game. Some would argue that um, Bahamut and um, Absolute Virtue, which is coming, are more difficult than these, which they very well may be, um, is the Grand Worms, of which there are three. 
The first, uh, the entry level one is Tiamat. The second level one is Jormungand. And the third level one, and the most dangerous, is... And I'm going to use the Final Fantasy XIV pronunciation here, is Vritra. Um, so, again, we're going to send it back to Quetch. Talk to us about the fire-based baddie known as Tiamat. Yep, Tiamat, uh, up until this week, was the one my LS had experience fighting out of these. And um, it spawns in Ottawa Chasm. Uh, it's just a regular old, uh, it's like three days pop window. They all work on this three-day three day thing. It's like 30, actually, I don't know, what is it? 54 to something hours actually i don't i don't i'm not the person who keeps track of those tod's 70 72 one hours so, okay. or 72 hours or something like that yeah yeah to, uh, okay um and then it's got like an hour every hour there's a window of time where it can spawn uh which is obviously different from the ha uh, 10 minute intervals that happen with the other kings that um actually all of these mobs i think we forgot to mention well the exception of like kv it's like a one hour window at 10 minute intervals um, but, uh, Ami, why don't you tell us where, uh, Tiamat comes from? I'm going to cut out some of these things with the parentheses, but in Mesopotamian mythology, Tiamat is a giant female dragon, which was the primordial, uh, creation, creatrix of all existence. Oh, that's a cool word. She created the world and the gods, uh, though this world had no land and a vast water, was a vast water world filled with waters of chaos tiamat personified the salt water ocean while her consort apsu personified the sweet water fresh water the intermingling of these two waters created the gods in the enuma elish the mesopotamian mesopotamian creation epic the gods bother tiamat and apsu so they decide to kill all their children the god ia discovers their plan and preemptively slays Apsu and casts a spell and puts him in a death-like sleep. Since the waters of Apsu still exist even after his death, Tiamat then sought revenge by creating an army of monsters and a new consort, Kingu, to be their general. Tiamat was slain by Mardu Marduk, who trapped her with a net of winds, shot arrows down her throat, and then cleaved her body in two. With the upper half creating the heavens and the sky and the lower half creating the earth, Tiamat is Akkadian for sea, or Akkadian for sea. Okay. In D&D &D lore, um, Tiamat is a more of a hydra, has several heads, and is the sworn enemy of Bahamut. Sword Coast. No, Sword Coast language. Yeah. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yep, describe where it spawns, uh, how the windows work. Uh, the fight is essentially a fight where Tiamat is fire-based and your tanks want to be wearing fire resistance gear. Tiamat will be on the ground for a number of minutes and then in the sky for a number of minutes. When it's in the sky, it kind of spits at you and I, does it cast? I think we keep it silenced. I'm not sure if it actually casts, or do we stun? That's what it is. We stun Faraga? Yeah, there's a, there's, you have a stun rotation and you stun the Faragas. Um, and when it's on the ground is when you are dealing damage with summoners. Do summoners do damage while it's in the air? Like they, they can use Diabolos. Okay. Um, so yeah. So when we used to do it because Tiamat is in the air much longer, we would try to do three Leviathans on the ground and at least one Diabolos while it was in the air and rest the rest of the time. Gotcha. Um, it basically uses similar moves to Nidhogg, Absolute Terror, Hard Roar, which is a Dispel, Spike Flail if you flip it around, and then Touchdown when it lands. Uh, so when it lands is actually when you also use one of your stuns in order to help recover from that Touchdown damage. Um, but essentially the way it's fought is, uh, you know, waves of summoner damage come in. Uh, recently they adjusted the Grand Worms. Um, I don't, we don't have exact drop pools, but uh, basically it, it now drops like D ingots and... Uh, uh, various other valuable materials, D cloth stuff like that, um, and that's that's essentially the whole fight. It's up, it's down. You're stunning the the agas and um, basically tanking all the moves. It, it does mighty strikes as well. Um, I I know the times that we've had the most issue is when it'll mighty strikes and then kill a tank in like two hits for like six, seven, eight hundred damage or whatever for each hit. 
Uh, the thing to be aware of is there are courses that spawn at night, which aggro low HP. There's also elementals that spawn uh, during weather, and those will aggro magic. So um, it's a bit of a it's a it's a bit of a dance fighting Tiamat between the summoners, the aggro, keeping the tanks up and resisting the, all the fire moves. And then uh, once you finally do uh, take it down, uh, it has a chance of dropping Herald Skaters, amongst other things. That is the one item that people mainly look for. It is a run speed boots for mainly for mages. It's like Black Mage, White Mage, um, Monk, uh, Summoner on it. Thank you, yeah. uh, summoner, I guess, and also Scholar and Geo whenever those, uh, whenever those release. Um, Super coveted item, one of the more valuable items that is actually sellable on Horizon because, like, for example, like, oh, um, Kraken Club isn't. And, uh, yeah, very heavily camped as well. Does it not drop the end coat? Oh, yes, the Noritsune Kote. Uh, it's like a 22 attack. Oh, no, it's 15 accuracy, uh, 10 accuracy for Monk Sam Nin. Um, it's like an accuracy swap, but I think, like, the D hands are better or something. It's yeah, it's it's like great. a consolation it's prize. Great. Yeah, you just kind of give it to anybody who might want it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, other, other than the story I told about the the basically Tiamat was the first fight I had where we had the extreme lag that caused them to change the claim mechanics. Um, I, I've told I've told both of our LS stories on that one. Anybody else have anything to share? Um, you know, just remember early Tiamat um, before they fine tuned everything back when it was like a lot more difficult when it first came out and like we we were like among the first to fight it not the first we were the first to kill it but not the um, not the first to fight it um there were other groups that were really close but at the beginning of the server they didn't have the tuning down just right for any of the three and um like as people would get close to killing it they were notorious for turning it off and depopping the mob because it wasn't working right so there was at least one other link shell, and I don't remember who they were, um, that would have gotten the kill first if they hadn't gotten it depopped while they were fighting it. Um, but they did come back a few times with different iterations and then finally landed on um, where they did with Tiamat. Um, being not as difficult as it had been in some previous fights, but more difficult than it had been in other previous fights. You guys are forgetting something. They recently adjusted all three grand worms. Yeah, Quetch mentioned that. Um, did you? So they did. That yeah, they, they the stat increase and lowered their level. They lowered the level, that gave well, a stat yeah. increase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and added the hour enrage. If it's a wait, alive for an hour, it enrages supposedly. I forgot about the stat thing. Yeah, supposedly you can melee it better now. That's what they say, at least. Um. All right, uh, so moving away from the first of the Grand Worms, we move on to the second. Uh, the second is a frosty lass named, or maybe lad, I don't know. I have never checked the uh, dragon genitalia. I don't know. The dragussy, I don't know if it exists. Um, but the next one is Jormungand, um, the purple bitch of the north. Um, this one is located in the Ulegurand range. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but... Seems pretty close. Um, all the way at the top, um, around some stuff. But I'm excited because I know what this one is in lore. Um, but I can't wait to hear from Ayame to explain what or who Jormungand is, was, or will be. Just just trying to pronounce it. I think it's like supposed to be like a Y, like your your mom. It's Jormungandr. Jormungandr. Yeah. I'm going to say Jormungand. Okay. That's how I'm going to say. In Norse mythology, it was a serpent that was thrown by Odin into the ocean encircling the world of Midgard. Odin did it's this Earth. because they knew. Midgard yeah. is Earth. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> they, <before>. they, <laughs> <laughs> they knew Jormungan would pose a threat to Aesir, which was the, the, that's the North gods. I don't know how to say that. Over time, Jorg Jormungan grew and grew until it encircled the world and bit it bit onto its own tail forming an, a giant loop a giant loop the ouroboros depicted in several ancient cultures it just makes me think of full metal alchemist honestly at ragnarok german gun will rise from the ocean and poison the skies by his presence thor is fated to slay german gun uh, uh, but then succumbed shortly 
after from Jormungand's incredibly potent venom. Jormungand is one of three children of Loki. The other two are Fenris Sulfur or Fenrir and Hel. Jormungand is also called Midgard Sorm. Sormer. I don't know how to say that. The Midgard Serpent or the World Serpent, which explains the title for defeating it, which is World Serpent Slayer. There's, um, so for defeating Tiamat, there's the Tiamat Trouncer, and we always thought that for uh, Jormungan, it should be the Jormi Jouncer. <laughs> but we thought the title should be, um, but they never, you know, they didn't want to listen to it. World Serpent Slayer it is, I guess. Um, so as mentioned, Jormungan is found up in the Uelagiran range at the top of the mountain. Um, <clears throat> the fight itself is... Somewhat similar to Tiamat, but not really, because Jormungand spends far less time up in the air, so there are more um, touchdowns and more touchdown damage uh, more frequently. Um, the moves that uh, Jormungandr will use um, are uh, a drawing. They all use that, obviously. Um, blood weapon, because Jormungandr is a dark knight. Um, so it uses blood weapon. It's used multiple times after 85% life. Um, glacial breath, which is a cone attack of ice. Um, absolute terror and horrid roar, just like uh, Tiamat used. They do the same thing. Um, much like uh, Fafnir or Nidhogg, it uses a wing called Gregale Wing. But this one is ice damage um, that also inflicts paralysis, both used in the air and on the ground, which fucking sucks. Um, spike Flail, which is fun. Don't get behind the dragon. Um, and then while it's in the air, it uses um, Sheet Blast, which is an AoE ice damage. And then, of course, the uh, touchdown. When it reaches sub 30%, uh, Jormungandr will use its special abilities at an increased rate. And it also gains the ability to Horrid Roar three times back to back to back. Um, which means that, like, and even if you stun it, it will still use the fucking thing. So chances are it's going to horrid roar three targets and stun them for, like, a full minute. Oh, because so it's a hate wipe, like... too. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, and it can use it three times um, in a row, which is just a kick right in the knackers. Um, so you got to make sure that you have people, that, enough tanks there to, like, pick it up and be ready to go. Um, red mage tanking there is always fun to watch and from what I've heard uh, to do. Um, so Jormungand's flight time is, uh, 30 seconds up in the air and then one minute on the ground. So, um, <clears throat> this fight, I've seen the recent version, uh, taken down by a group of folks who were like spamming Diabolos on it. So it was just like, even when it was up in the air, didn't matter. They were just sending in Diaboloses to making sure that they weren't there when, uh, drop or, uh, touchdown happened because that does do a lot of damage. Um, especially to wee little summoners. You want to make sure you're out of the way. Um, the things that Jormungandr drops, um, looking at this list, I don't think it drops in, like a be uh, behemoth hide, D cloth, D ingot, divine log. Um, I don't think I've seen any of those in the times that I've killed it. Those might be have been what was added because they added money drops to Tiamat. I, I did see a drop list from Tiamat that included items from there that I had never seen previously. Right, they did. The, they they mentioned Tiamat specifically. Okay, don't know that they added those to Jeremy. Gotcha. Um, something that it can, that it pretty much always drops is the Molybdenum Molybdenum ore. Um, drops up to four. Makes that Dragoon set whose name I forget right now. Baron um, the Baron set. I believe yeah the Baron Sio or no the uh, I forget Baron. Baron Baron. I Barone. people correct me all the time on that. Yeah. Um, drops all the typical dragon things. Um. Also drops two other things, one that's unique to uh, Horizon. Uh, the first I'll mention is the Mercurial Pole, which I myself have and use quite often. Um, the Mercurial Pole is a monk, white mage, black mage, paladin, bard, dragoon, summoner, scholar, and geo pole. Uh, gives plus 30 MP, but that's not the cool part of the staff. The staff occasionally attacks two to five times, and that's fun. Um, because I can use that when I have Carbuncle out, and I don't lose mana for having Carbuncle out, even with that staff. So I'll uh, I'll go ham. It was funny because like I'd never leveled my staff skill, and then I got that fucking thing, 
and uh, it went up pretty goddamn quick, as you could imagine. Um, staff skill was maxed out very, very quickly. Um, any stories about Jormy? It's the first Grand Worm we attempted, and this is really early on demo. I'm talking like May or something, and uh, we pecked at it for a while and didn't get any momentum going. Our outside party wasn't great either because there's all those Ellies and stuff out there. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's my only real interaction with it. Fought it a lot of times. Um, no real fun stories. Um, the only fun stories are when I was watching other people fight it that couldn't kill it. Like those stories are fun, but I'm not going to go into those. Um, it's a good fight. Um, oh, the other, I forgot to mention the other thing that it drops. My bad, my bad. Mercurial Pole. And then here on Horizon, it drops the uh, Worm Tongue, which is a Dragoon Pole Arm, which is best in slot until you get the, um, the relic. What's it called? The Relic uh, yeah. Plant. Um, it's got a unique looking um, skin on it. I think it's from a Ambuscade weapon later in the game. Um, but they pulled that in and they used it uh, for this. And it's really cool to see. It looks really out of place from like the rest of the weapons. It's got like a new updated look that a lot of the weapons don't have. Um, so it's very cool when you see people walking around with that. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it. If there's no stories, uh, we'll move on to the last but not least, um, the underground nasty summoner bitch, uh, Vertra or Vritra. Sorry, got to make sure I spell it or say it correctly. Um, Ritra is in the King Rampair's tomb. Um, when you are, you know, if you're going to King Arthro, instead of going around and heading back out to Jugner, you'd go even further into the tomb, um, where the higher level things are, where even a 75 has to sneak and or invis. I think it's just sneak in there. Um, and get to like the chamber that you have to open the door and, and Ritra lies beyond the door. Um, She's a real pain in the ass, um, but before we get into all of the awesome things about Vritra, um, Ayame, who slash what is Vritra? Okay. In Hindu legend, Vritra, and they put a different spelling, is a gigantic three-headed dragon or serpent. Vritra was of such a scale of size, his coils encircled mountains and his head touched the sky. Vritra was known for bringing drought and once absorbed all the waters of the world in Rig Veda, causing the world to become a vast desert wasteland. His chief ad 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 adversary, excuse me, was Indra, god of thorn, god of thunderstorms and war, king of the Devas, which is the Hindu pantheon early in their history. Indra traveled to the distant land where Vritra resided, did battle with Vritra, and slew the beast, causing all the water to return to the world. So what, he was just holding all the water in him? In a later version of the myth, Vritra was created by Tavashtri to get revenge on Indra for murdering his son, Trisiras. Vritra defeated Indra and swallowed him, but the other devas intervened and forced Vritra to regurgi regurgitate Indra. Eventually, an agreement was reached where Indra took an oath that he would not at attack Vritra with, sorry, Vritra with anything made from metal, wood, stone, nor anything dry or wet, and nor during the day or night. So Indra killed Vritra with foam from waves at twilight. In other versions, the goddess Sarasvati killed Vritra. Vritra means enveloper. Vritra was considered an asura, which is like a demon. You're muted. You know, that's I'm just like it's just like that's the running joke tonight. <laughs> like that and yeah, um, my 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 carby's gonna have to use suck. At some point, there I had to get it in. Had to make sure we almost it. made a whole fucking no, episode. Nah, nah, I wasn't gonna have without it. you using it. suck. Wasn't I'm gonna? I always suck. I suck super hard. Um, so uh, the Vritra fight is the most difficult of the three. Vritra does not take off or land. Um, she, I, I guess I don't know what her preferred pronouns are, but um, 
he uh, he's in that little cave, so he doesn't go up in the air at all. But what he does do is summons three undead, um, a skeleton warrior, a skeleton black mage, and a ghost, and they all do all of the nasty things associated with them. So one of the uh, strategies is to have a group of folks outside of the main alliance um, grabbing those and pulling them away from the main alliance who's fighting Vritra and killing them. Um, other things that Vritra can do, and I think the most uh, devastating, at least from retail, um, is the charm move. Vritra can charm. Um, and it, tar it can charm, according to this, up to two and a half minutes. Um, so if somebody does get charmed, uh, it's good to have a lot of bards for this fight. Um, and you would want to get slept by a bard for the duration of that so you don't go off killing your friends. Um, it does a move called Sable Breath, which is a conic AoE elemental attack, um, which it says here, the, closest you are, the closer you are to the center of the area of effect, the more damage you take. Um, a full damage breath attack can kill nearly anyone in one hit. Cyclone Wing, which is AoE magic damage, uh, much like the other wings, but this one uh, inflicts sleep. Um, Absolute Terror and Horrid Roar, same as the other two Grand Worms, has a very high auto regen, um, and also can use the dark magic of Bio 3, Espelga, Blindga, and Sleepga 2. Um, Vritra is nothing to be trifled with. Uh, he is a bad motherfucker, and he will rip you apart if you're not ready. Um, it's, it's a great fight though. A lot of fun. If you ever get a chance to go do it, uh, Vritra drops all of the same things that a normal dragon would drop. Um, according to this list, it says behemoth hide. Not sure if that's true, but the cool thing, uh, or the very, very useful thing or wait, actually there's one more thing. I don't know if this is still true. Apparently there's something called the revilers helm. Yes. That allegedly Vritra drops, um, Level 71 helmet for warrior paladin or warrior red mage paladin dark knight beast uh ranger samurai dragoon blue and rune um it has a an enchantment with 100 charges um and a 5 minute cooldown don't know if that's how it is on horizon uh with provoke so every 5 minutes you have provoke uh by using this helmet um which i don't know if that's cool or not but the uh, but the really cool thing that it drops is um Two cashmere threads and two cashmere wool, I believe, is the standard. It always drops enough, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it always drops enough to craft a Shire's Mantille, uh, which is bard, best in slot, uh, chess piece, and something highly sought after by all bards. Um, and this is one of only two ways to get it. Um, maybe it drops from somewhere else, but the only two ways that I'm aware of are here and from Bahamut version 2. Um, that's how you get the uh, cashmere wool. Um, and that's how you make the end gear bard piece. Don't really have any like super fun stories other than it was a real pain in the ass when they first brought out Vritra. Um, had to really kind of like work through a lot of growing pains with fighting that dragon. Um, but it eventually got into a place that um, wasn't too bad. It now supposedly drops a new thing. Don't know that it's actually dropped for anyone yet and no one knows what it is. So there's a lot of speculation unless it's been confirmed and I just missed out on it. Um, but it does, yeah, it drops a new thing. Any uh, Anybody got anything that they want to uh, add to that? We fought it this week, an earnest attempt. We got it to 7%. Really? Yep. Nice. Demo. We had a, we just, uh, we had a perfect storm of people on and it was up and uh, we went out there. Uh, we wiped our first time. We got it about halfway. Uh, our positioning wasn't great. The thing about that fight is you mentioned the charm. That charm is long, so you want to kick the tanks out when they get charmed. We basically had three tanks on deck and then two in the main ally. So when somebody got charmed, we'd cycle a tank. And uh, But doing that and keeping Vritra positioned in such a way that the summons can deal their damage is difficult uh, because your tanks are consistently like rotating in and out. So really that fight is all about hate management. We got down to about 10%. It finally turned and went to some mages that were further away. Um, we really couldn't restabilize. The ad party um, ended up like being a little weakened at the time. We got ads from Vritra. It ended up wiping us at 7%. It was a really sad thing, but we made an honest attempt at it. it as a link shell, it was just one of my favorite moments uh, with my shell, like really getting together and trying to make this thing happen. So um, I just wanted to share that with everybody. 
when we eventually get a kill, I'll let you all know about it on the podcast. But, uh, um, yeah, it was a fun one. Hopefully you get to see whatever that new drop is. That'd be insane, yeah. I'm curious to know. Yeah. There's speculation that it's the Malignant Sword. The rumor still stands. Yeah, right. It always has. Uh, that's what people say Diabolos is going to drop in Tavnasia, too. So we'll see what it actually winds up being. Um, but if nobody has anything else, that's it for the H&M section of tonight's cast. Man, we have gone very long. This is going to be a very lengthy podcast, um, but I'm glad to do it. This is, uh, you know, we're trying to get some information out there that people may not otherwise know. Uh, people who are getting into the H&M scene, hopefully this was a little helpful for you. Um, if not, there's always more ways you can research stuff on the FFX Cyclopedia and the BG Wiki. They're both great resources for learning more about these fights. Um, before we go, though, we always do a little thing that we like to call Glitch Fest, where everybody in the cast likes to talk about things that have happened to them uh, since the last time we got together. Little bugs, little glitches, little things that uh, make life either a little bit more fun or a little bit more uh, frantic. Anybody got anything this week? Friggin' server melted down today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude. yeah. <laughs> we were getting ready to go into Ultima. And uh, we were like, I'm R0-ing. Somebody else was like, oh, I'm R0-ing. And then we're like, okay. So I go to the Discord and I see R0 Windy, R0 Juno, R0 Battaglia. I'm like, oh, the server's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one for you that relates to that. And it's someone from our link shell had just finished, uh, what is it? Uh, Rec Room of Sin? I saw the screenshot. Rec Room of Sin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they were like... Just got their loot. We're gonna lot on the X's knife that dropped, and then the server went down. An actual X's knife. What a kick in the teeth. They got it though. Great. Yeah, they submitted a ticket. They, they submitted the ticket and they got the X's knife sent to the right person. Rock on. So kudos to the uh, to the GM staff for making that happen. Any other glitches, guys? I don't have any that I can think of. Um, nothing new has happened. I, don't think so. I got nothing. Okay. All right. All right. That's fine. It's good. That means the server is stabilizing and things are getting better. Fewer bugs means a better gaming experience, right, gamers? Yay, yeah. gamers. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, this is the end of the episode. Before we go, I want to remind you one last time about the 20th episode that will be live on Twitch on our Twitch, the uh, Level Sync Podcast Twitch channel. Make sure you're checking that out. Make sure you drop into the Discord and join our Discord so that you can uh, participate in our daily conversations and you can also participate more readily into the uh giveaways and the uh competitions that we're having for that upcoming episode um like i said that is monday december 18th from five pacific or starting at five pacific eight eastern and going until we're sick and tired of it um the two competitions don't forget are a level one run from winders to juno naked no meds no pots no nothing um Naked run. We're going to be on Chocobos running alongside you, making fun of you as you die. That's going to be great fun for everyone to watch. And also, don't forget, we're having a photo competition. Real-life photos. Uh, send in any photos to our Discord. We'll make a channel for it. Where you can, we'll make it like photo submissions or something where people can submit their photos um, so that we can all vote. And then we can choose our five favorite. And then you guys can choose who the winner and wins the prize of the photo contest is. But thank you guys so much for being here. I want to have, I want you all to have an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on part of the world you're in. For the Lost Tide Lord, I am a cat. I see Caladrius. Later. Quetch. Bye, everybody. And everyone in the background, the, the, the room ghost specifically, <laughs> who, hasn't made, who hasn't made any appearances tonight, but it, it does exist, I promise. Um, I want you guys to take care of yourselves and each other. I will see you next time. Be good. Take care. Um, have an awesome couple of weeks, and uh, we'll. I guess the next one is the next one. The live episode. Next one's a live episode. This is nineteen right. right now. Oh shit! This is episode <laughs> nineteen. Episode twenty <laughs> coming. Next episode is live. Make sure you're there. Join the Discord. Join Horizon. Tell everybody that we sent you. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.